He's never killed anyone. His biggest crime to humanity is showing those nasty ass fucking feet. Yeah. All I gotta say is fuck those nasty ass feet. Welcome back to another episode of Film Fumblers, where we fumble through your favorite films. My name is Karen. My name is Adrian. I'm James. And I'm Jay. And today we're talking about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, written and directed by Quentin Tarantino. You guys want to go right into the shot right now? We got to fumble somehow. Yeah. So let's do it. What is? Wait. What is it? What are we drinking right now? This is effing vodka, cucumber flavored. Cucumber edition. Liquid. Luxury. <laughs> That's beautiful. Something like that. All right. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Vodka. Cheers. <sighs> Ooh, smoother than a baby's bottom. It's not bad. Yeah, it's it's a bad. lot of cucumber. It's not mm-hmm. great. Mm-hmm. It tastes like like a cucumber Gatorade. <laughs> but pepino. It, but it went bad. Limon pepino. <laughs> this is what you have right here. Yeah. A little la croix. La croix. With a little, little limon pepino. I was tricked into buying that Gatorade oh. flavor once. Ooh, Ooh that's it's nice. good. I don't what? You ah. hate it? It's no, refreshing. No, no, it's it's, it's very refreshing. When you're expecting something that is very different than any other Gatorade like flavor. The lime For me, is, yeah. the only thing I saw was the, it's like limon pepino, right? Yeah. So yeah, I was like, oh, this is lime something. <laughs> Fuck yeah, let's go. And then it's just cucumber in your face when you're not expecting it's it. It's very cucumber. I guess, dude. It's no, but you know shock. what the best is? You drink half of it, fill that bitch up with water... Oh. And it's a brand new fucking drink. Yeah. The two comes a little, little mellower. The limon's a little that. lower. Actually and it's a brand really new drink, dude. It's <laughs> it's great. It's really good. Dude, I think uh, the other day we have we bought like a bottle of or like a container of uh, apple juice. No, no, no. It was lemonade. And I remember I poured a full glass of it and I drank it and I was like, what that? Like it's so it's sweet. Yeah. And I was like, how old am I that I literally had to like drink half of it and then fill the rest with water yeah like, this is that's disgusting. where we are yeah, yeah. And we're just like it's a it's a byproduct of yeah. saving that money and also right yeah <laughs> coffee and beer destroying our taste buds yeah, yeah. well i'm the most that. frugal one here and i st- i wasn't even trying to save that money on that one it was just too <laughs> sweet but okay so you guys wanted to talk about your theater experiences so okay full full disclosure uh, I watched this movie on Friday. Today is Sunday. I watched this movie on Friday. Taryn, you watched it last night, so Saturday night. Saturday, and then Jay. We both just watched. We that. just watched it. Jay and James About just watched it like ago. an hour ago. Yeah. Okay, so we. All right. So theater experiences. You had something to say about this? So I went. I tried at a new theater that's by my house, and I think it's just super weird now that. Some theaters don't have reclining seats, don't have, oh, like, yeah. assigned seats that you can choose before. So my friends went early to get seats and, like, save us, like, all kinds of seats, but there was, like, almost no one in there, so it was okay, but the seats huh. were so uncomfortable, dude. Like, it was yeah. so weird. Like, the, they were, like, so close together. They were, had to have been, like, maybe a foot between, like, your legs and the next, like, chair. It was pretty weird. Yeah. Like, kicking chairs on accident. How long since you've sat in a recliner? Or since you haven't sat in a reclining seat. Well, last time I went to the movies when we saw Midsummer, I think. Oh, okay. But it was worse before than that. that was oh yeah, it was way worse than that. Damn. I actually liked that theater. Interesting. Hmm. Before that, I have no idea when the last time that was. It's weird though because like, how how long ago did recliners come out? It's been like a few years at least. I feel like that's. Yeah, true. I mean, Lazy he, Boy here, was invented in nineteen. <laughs> Probably like nineteen seventy. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but like. It's something that I never was just like, I need this. I need to be reclined while I'm enjoying a movie in a, yeah. in a theater. But now that I have it, I'm like, I can't go back. It's not yeah. even about reclined for me. It's just the space. You get yeah. so much more yeah. seat space. You get so much light. It's about the recline for me. The and rest, people so are like, further away from you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you don't have to hear some jackass yelling to his girlfriend in the top row. You right. don't have to hear like, someone in front of you being like, what did he say? Right. Even next to you, there's like a giant armrest between yeah. everyone. Mm-hmm. You can finally actually share an armrest. You know what I love about the armrest too is like armrest cup holder, and then if you're you know with your woman, armrest reclines still a cup holder underneath the. There's a cup holder you underneath can pull the cup those holder. Up? Wait, yeah, what? Oh, they pull. You, you didn't know that. that? No. You, you pull which those one? up. With it becomes twenty four. Yeah. 
Damn. You pull them up, and you can like get cozy, and you still have the the cup holder I did underneath. Not know that, that was true. Wow, that that's, that's why you guys didn't know that you needed it. <laughs> Maybe I've been doing it wrong. You it's have been. Just like a problem. couch, you change it into yeah. a couch. Almost. Yeah. Wow. Well, we, we got kicked this. out of Lion King for being a little. No, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, hold on. Before you go, I want to say I would love tonight. That wasn't really what I wanted to talk about, but. Yeah, you just mentioned people yelling to each other in the back of the theater. Yeah. I don't know. It was like, some parts were really loud in the theater. is a little uncomfortable. But, like, some girl was like, oh, my God, turn it down. Like She literally was like, saying that? Not whispering. Like, she was, like, really loud. I was, like, saying it. And I was, like, trying to, like, look back. I was, like, it's, what is happening? Like, is it about the movie? Because it didn't, like, sound like she was talking about the movie. Huh. Was it in particularly loud scenes? Yeah, okay. so I mean, but like yeah. the way she was like phrasing right, what right. she was saying, it didn't seem like that, but. That's why I just want my own theater. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Theater? I love going to theaters yeah. and seeing the big screen, but I just don't like. Yeah, I just need one of those. How stressful it is, because I'm like, <laughs> people are crazy, man. I don't know what's going to happen. It is stressful. Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm the type of person that if people in my group are being like notably loud, like if I'm out at a movie theater or at a restaurant or just in public, I'm very uncomfortable with like I'm just like mm -hmm. oh, like I feel like I have to like apologize on their behalf and like it's just it's just part of I don't know it just it sucks. And we're over there f yelling fucking this fuck that fuck it's probably me it's probably it's me <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't want to say it's probably me James. being the one the loudest <laughs> it's James but, I'm sorry yeah yeah and um there's just so many people like leaving and coming back in like oh, no. so the much like I couldn't tell it, it was, was three hours it was a long time I yeah. really actually don't know how long uh, it was <laughs> how long it's it's three hours, hours 45 minutes right two okay. hours 45 yeah. minutes hours, four, I felt long but actually no long I think I only did pee once but Justine peed like three times holy like, shit yeah it's yeah. yeah. like a bunch of like at least like six like yeah. to ten people walking in and out and I was just like I was the same people that were there before because this guy just came in and sat by himself in the front <laughs> I was like what is going on yeah. so yeah I'll watch the first half of the movie too. you watch the second <laughs> that's Not another great. reason why I would want my own theater is just like I know I get that a lot of people can't do it but I have yeah. no problem sitting through a long movie like right. oh yeah you know, well when anything. your prostate's getting a little old and you know it's <laughs> pushing up hell it's not <laughs> Um, Maybe soon, but yeah. you know. I think yeah. Jay's or James is, is just preemptively banned from your home theater, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. I, 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 I don't have a problem staying to the host theater. Yeah, yeah. I was just getting real sweaty and like uncomfortable. I don't know. I guess yeah. I didn't need the recliners or anything like that because we go downtown. Downtown's the worst theater. Yeah. Oh yeah. By far, yeah. but whatever. Was there true. was actually people there though this time. It was almost full. Usually it's was empty. It really? yeah. Usually wow. it's like empty. It this time empty. it was kind of like oh shit, there's people yeah. here. There, I, there's, I bought there's tickets on Friday like in the morning, and I struggled to find a a showing past five o'clock that had two seats next to each other. Really? It was wow. It was pretty packed. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of why we went to that new theater because everything else around that time was like pretty much sold out. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But the well, movie was so long. You get free parking downtown in the parking structure <laughs> for three hours only. And it like, yeah. went over the three hour limit and we had to pay a dollar for parking. <laughs> and oh, Jack was okay. just like, what the fuck? <laughs> I was like, yeah, the Dude, movie was I fucking was, long. When I gave him the ticket, I just was expecting like, Yeah, she's all, you got to see it. It was like a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> got it. A dollar. I don't need this dollar right now. Poor fucking Matt Cage lost his uh, oh, his know. ticket, oh, so he probably yeah. paid like five bucks. <laughs> I mean, that's not that much, but still, yeah. you don't I mean, have to pay. When you're expecting to pay nothing. People in yeah. bigger cities are like laughing at us. I know, yeah. Yeah. totally. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, I paid like $70 for an hour. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. For parking, but... Yeah. Well, so what was weird is the movie opens with like the old-timey looking mm -hmm. shots, right? Like and in our theater, the lights didn't go down. Oh. So they were still on. And everybody was just kind of like, this is kind of weird. Some people were throwing their arms up and shit like that. Yeah. And Jordan was like, should I go tell someone? But I was just like, it's Tarantino. It might be part of it. I know. <laughs> I'm like, my bus through the doors yeah. right now. I was just like, this could Don't be. Don't turn those lights off. Yeah. No, Please, disclaimer, the same shit happened when we saw Lion King. Did it? And they, oh, and they just... didn't turn off the lights until like... 
It fucking said the title of the oh, fucking shit. movie. Oh, wow. That's I think honestly, uh, yeah, I think they honestly give people time to fucking figure their shit okay. out, and then when the title comes on, like the Lion King or Once Upon a Time, then it was just like okay, boom. And dude, yeah, I think that's like a thing that they're doing in that theater. I don't know, yeah, maybe twenty four because I went to twenty four and it they were the lights seemed like they were on. Like I remember, Justin was like, the lights are still on, mm-hmm. and like it seemed like the movie was like right there, and we were just like, uh. But they turned off before, but it was... Mm. Is it, maybe it's something the theaters are doing now. They're just leaving Dude, the lights funny. on a little bit. Because yeah, for me, the lights went off, and they played more ads. I was like, we just got really? baited so hard. I was uh, like, oh yeah. my god, I just want to watch this movie already. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought that was weird. But yeah, it was, like I said, I wasn't going to put it past them. Like, here's yeah. some weird <laughs> shit for my movie. Yeah. <laughs> but it was just, yeah. yeah, not supposed to be that So weird. a fun little story about that. So <clears throat> Justine and I, my girlfriend Justine, we were planning to see Midsummer, so we'd been meaning to see that for a while but I saw that this movie had came out and I didn't hear much about it like before I mean I don't watch a lot of TV ads and stuff but once I heard that Quentin Tarantino came out with a new movie it's her favorite director so I was like alright bought tickets didn't tell her what movie we were watching anything about it and then like the last preview I was like it's a Quentin Tarantino movie the cast is stacked and then just like the first scene came up and she was just like it, it was it was pretty good it was worth that's cool yeah it was really cool yeah was I didn't cool. know like the plot or anything really I knew like the Manson stuff was involved but I didn't know anything else about oh. it which was oh. I don't know I like going in blind to everything I had literally no idea that that even was a part I of it I didn't yeah. either I, t- I watched one trailer yeah. and then that was that was it when it finally snapped I was like oh okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah I knew they were playing with it like when yeah. all the hippies and the f- they're fucking weird Charlie and, 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 yeah. and cryptic and yeah. spooky. Yeah. There's a big yeah. cult trend right now, I feel like, in movies. I feel like there's a lot of movies. Dude, that shit, like, that shit. I don't know, it seems more real than any other kind of horror stuff, really. Yeah, I guess that's it's true. It's not like uh, supernatural. Because it was real. <laughs> no, I know. Like, 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 in other ones, literally. Yeah. like, it's just actual people doing fucked up things. It's not like some spiritual, like, whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think, like, well, I mean, it depends on what type of person you are. If you're, if you're the type of person who, like, really buys into the, the whole, like, demons are in, living in my house. But, like, the crazy serial killers is, like, actually scary. Like, yeah. Yeah. it's just, like, th- there's nothing stopping anyone from, like, breaking down your door and, and you know, that's like, true. some crazy-ass yeah. cult doing that shit. Yeah. You know, that's real. But, I mean, not that I'm, like, crazy paranoid about it, but it's, like, it's the most, more realistic than, like, the omen walking through my door, you know? Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, there was, like, parts of this movie that felt horror-like, mm-hmm. but, you know, I don't know, it was just, like, a little a little taste of it. Yeah, or, like, this fully direction. came out. Yeah. And I would say even the end wasn't, like, horrific, you know? But the, it was crazy. I mean, visually, maybe. If we want to, like, jump around that much, I do want to just briefly talk about how I felt about the end. And I, I love the ending scenes, the, the couple of ending scenes, but it felt like a low-budget horror film. Like, <laughs> just like, yeah. they were going for crazy gore, and like, let's just, like, do this, like, let's just let's just go for this. Yeah. And, like, let's bash some, some bitch's <laughs> face into a fireplace. Right. And, like, let's just do it. But at the same time, that felt the most Tarantino to me. As a oh, well, yeah. 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 That I was mean, definitely... Yeah. It was like... Oh, there he is. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, the rest yeah. of the movie, there's the dialogue, it's witty, there's some parts that are funny, but right. it's overall, it just feels kind of slow, and it's paced very slowly. Even the shots, the length of the shots, they oh, were so interesting yeah. only because they were so long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, she's walking across the street, it was like, well, let's get her on this side of the street, come yeah. all the way down, then she's going to walk across, and then she's going to start going the other way. Yeah. It was like this whole-ass <laughs> thing. <laughs> And that the was so annoying to me. Yeah. Really? It was oh, so fucking so annoying dude. to me. Justine? Okay. It was just like... And then, okay, so there was these really long scenes. And then what was up with the weird fucking choppy uh, scenes that they had? Yes. That what was, gonna ask was that? Yeah. You're gonna fucking... Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he all of a sudden... You're gonna waste my on. fucking time. And then yeah, I was no. gonna be all these like random choppy ones. I'm like, yeah. what are we doing now? Now you want, now you want to save 25 seconds <laughs> when you could have yeah. just... That was the first time he was talking I with, uh, yeah, was it Timmy, T- Timothy Oliphant? The oh, guy, yeah. he's in... He's been popping up a lot yeah, of stuff, too. That was their, like, first scene where they were meeting each other. Yeah. In the bar. And it, I noticed, I was like, wait, oh, did it look, like, look behind me? Like, what? Oh, yeah. his hat suddenly was on his head or whatever? Did that it happen? It just chopped. I don't know. Yeah, it was like, weird. his hat wasn't, he was holding his hat, and then it 
the just first like, stopped and then he had. I was like, oh, yeah. did they just have a whole conversation? And it just felt like they yeah. were still in the yeah. same like. I thought spot. they were showing. Like, yeah, I thought they were showing like highlights maybe of the conversation yeah, in yeah. like a really spliced up way. But I noticed it the the first time I was like, was that a was that my eyes playing tricks on me or like an error? But then it happened to, like a second time. I was like, no, this is intentional. What was the second time? No, it was the same scene. It oh, was like okay, in, okay, within okay. the same scene, yeah. but I was... Yeah, know. I wonder... I feel like it was on purpose, obviously. But why? Because this but whole movie why? is just a, a love letter to old movies like that from from Tarantino. Oh, yeah. So he's like, that probably happens a lot. You just, I'm just going to do that, too. Like, like quote-unquote, like, spaghetti okay. western type of... Yeah. Yeah. Because I swear, yeah. about an hour of the movie is Margot Robbie and Brad Pitt... Driving around through LA, I fucking That's loved it, dude. <laughs> it's like just all the sets. So it looks many so driving. Good. Okay, I want to talk about the driving scenes as I open this next beer. So, the ra- I I absolutely loved the radio when when they were driving at all times. They were playing ads that were like so obviously from the the late sixties. Like it was like. A and W root beer now with our new twist off cap. Like it was just like the. Yeah. I, I think that it was just done so well. Like. If there's one that thing part of it in the movie that, and there's a lot of things I really liked, but one of the things I really liked was how well they were able to make it feel like the time. It really was. Yeah, it was, yeah it was, I thought it was awesome. so. Clothing, cars, the houses, the shit. The, <laughs> the, houses, the, the ads are on the radio. Yeah. 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 So one of the guys we actually saw the movie with, he's an older gentleman, and I mean he lived through those times through the late 60s and so he kind of was talking about that like oh yeah like i was like interested in the cars and like seeing all the cars and like yeah. how it feels mm-hmm. yeah it definitely made you feel that it was in that time period so that yeah. was pretty cool yeah so the scenes might have been a little like repetitive or boring or whatever but i just had like such a fun time just looking at the background like mm-hmm seeing what they threw in there, like little Easter eggs, or if they fucked up or something and accidentally included like a newer thing, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just like those scenes. Yeah, and I think part of the reason that Quentin Tarantino's movies seem so drawn out, it seems like there's a lot of pointless shit in them. Like, look at any of Quentin Tarantino's movies. They, they all have that element. It's like, is this really necessary to the... And I'm going to probably reference my girlfriend a lot because it's her favorite actor, or her favorite um, director, but... Apparently he is involved in some aspect or a big aspect of the like editing of of movies like when they're kind of chopping everything up and like he's in that room and it's I mean it's kind of I feel like it's kind of like his baby it's like oh well it's like if you had to have a kid and and you're like trying to pick on like a series of 100 photographs that you took of them you're like well I love them all like let's put all of them in there and I feel like that's probably kind of what happens that's why his movies are so fucking long and sometimes pointless scenes but yeah I mean, he's. If there's one thing about him, it's that he's like never been afraid to try something or do whatever he wants, really. Right. Oh, yeah. Which is why there's so many people that like his movies, I guess. But I guess it's also how he could get away with things that are like. If anybody else did them, we'd probably mm-hmm. be like, yeah, I don't know about that. But if, because he does it, there's like this sense of. Yeah. Artistry. And, and I feel like maybe I'm a little biased too, and. In that, where it's just like, oh well, it's just Quentin Tarantino. It's like, but if that if if there's something that's maybe bad directing or like a bad decision in the film, like, is it okay to just be like, oh well, that's just Quentin Tarantino. That's just how he is, you know. I mean, I it's like I that friend so. you have who's like a total bitch or a dick, and you're yeah. just like, well, it's just how they are. It's like, uh. no, I think you know, <laughs> you don't get him. You try to judge them all equally, in my opinion. Who yeah, doesn't matter who they are. Oh, is, we're all biased. I think that's kind of like what Tim Burton's feeling right now. Mm. Like his kind of striped shtick has faded, and now his like the movies he's made recently, like Dumbo and shit, are not getting as good reviews, and people are tired of seeing like his wife Johnny Depp and whoever else in the same movie over and over or shit <laughs> like that. Yeah. Yeah. And some people are just like that with like one trick ponies, but that's where Quentin Tarantino is not that. Like he can do those things, but he can also tell a good story and like yeah. give you a real visual like cool thing to look at that's not the same every time I think that's why I like his movies at least so let's dive a little bit into the plot of this movie so we have Rick fucking Dalton and Cliff Booth uh, Rick Dalton played by Leo Leonardo DiCaprio and Rick Booth or uh, Cliff Booth played by Brad Pitt Um, Leo is the star up and coming he's always the villain kind of thing but 
uh, Cliff Booth is his uh, stunt double. And it, it kind of just really right away opens up to like their their relationship and how like you have um, you have Rick Dalton who is living this like movie superstar type of lifestyle and then you have the Cliff Booth who is a stunt double and he's just like his personal assistant and he just lives in a tiny trailer and I don't know let's 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 talk about like their relationship and how Leo and Brad Pitt kind of worked together in this movie well, Cliff Booth was a badass motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. God, that character was so cool. Yeah, he really was. Is it kind of strange how Tarantino makes you love a guy who maybe quite literally murdered his wife? Yeah. Yeah. Too. Is it kind it of never weird? Showed do, do you feel bad? Or do you feel bad for loving him as much as you do? And you're like, well, it's just you're like, yeah, you're like, you're like, it's not that big of a deal. So but he's so yeah. lovable and so yeah. like, yeah. Relaxed and quiet, composed. Yeah. So there's <laughs> they they show a scene where because al- allegedly um, Cliff Booth got away with murdering his wife on a boat in the middle of the ocean, kind of thing. And they they cut to a scene where it's it shows his uh, Cliff Booth's wife nagging at him. He's like just fishing or doing whatever, and like he's just kind of there. And, he, and like it's like okay, is he gonna murder his wife? Is she gonna die in some weird accident? And, like, he's kind of framed, or not framed, but, like, held liable for it, you know? And it just, like, cuts out before anything important happens. And you're just, and it leaves the audience, like, well, you don't know either. Like, it feels pretty implied. He's, like, holding, I like, a harpoon. He he's just, is, like, slowly like, aiming it at her, like, just, like... He... Ah, I well, don't know. I don't know that he did it still. A little bit when he fights... You know, is it Bruce, Bruce Lee? Lee yeah. supposed to be Bruce Lee? Oh, right. And he explains how if somebody died in an accident, like a fight, it would be manslaughter. I, yeah, it seems that was... like he knows these things already because he's been through them. Oh. You know? <laughs> yeah. But I thought that it kind of showed that even this guy who seems cool, calm, and collected all the time has like a breaking point. Which is okay. like, you can say he's got a hot temper, like he can appear on the outside physically cool while he's beating Bruce Lee's ass. Well, you know did you I mean? see what he did to the hippies? I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, my God. I that... think that's, that's very much proof that he fucking killed his wife right there. Yeah, yeah. he was ready to do like that. He, he might have been like really high, but... Well, yeah, he might have been really high, but you could just see the brute strength and just, oh, like, yeah. the... Well, there was, a, yeah, there, was a, yeah, there was a tone of, like, straight-up apathy or, like, just, like, matter-of-factly how he was going through that yeah. scene. Yeah. Like, how he was just, like... Holy shit! What was that guy's name? What was it? It was like Rex, Rex, Rex. or something. No, was something to yeah, <laughs> it's like Tex. Get him, Tex. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah. It's like I am the devil, and he's yeah, just like, no, yeah. someone a lot less cool. Than that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that like those dial like you can't ever get <laughs> that dialogue anywhere else. Yeah. That's what I love about yeah. movies. Yeah. And there's a lot, like, happening. Like, I mean, people are dying in this scene, but those yeah. little quips are just what fucking make it. It's so good. <laughs> you know, and, and I think... We're going to talk about this end scene a lot because there's this... It's so important to the rest of the movie. Like, just... It's just, like, I think one of the most important scenes. But I didn't know whether to, whether to like, turn away or laugh at, like, the same time oh, during, that, during scene. that scene. Like, yeah. he's bashing this girl's face into a fireplace, and I'm like... This is so brutal and like gross, but like yeah. it's also hilarious. <laughs> like, yeah, I was like, how the hell? Like, laughing the whole time. Yeah, like, it's when he so, threw the the cat dog food. food at that girl's yes. face. Yes, and great. like, you think like oh. like okay, if that was a comedy movie and like there was a fight scene where you throw a can of dog food at somebody's face, it like bonks them on the head and they pass out. Yeah. This hit her right in the nose, and her nose is like shattered and bleeding, That's and like. Real. You're just like, oh my, God, like what? Dude, I laughed, and Jordan was like, yeah. Why are you laughing? Like, oh my God! I was just like, <laughs> oh my yeah. God, it's funny. No, like, yeah, they, they yeah, set up that a, whole thing like perfectly because they it was um, beautiful. They were just the largest dog, freaking food cans I've ever seen. <laughs> yes. I don't think Rat anyone's flavored. ever. Yeah. 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 I don't think Ridiculous. anyone's ever seen for ferocious dogs yeah, or something. Right on the yeah, plopping into the bowl. It's just so much food. Oh, yeah. I know. Yeah. Those shots were cool, actually. I really liked them. Yeah, it, it was disgusting, but, like, it's also relatable. Like, everybody's done that shit, you know? Yeah. With a weird canned thing that you make. Yeah. Just, 
Yeah, well, and everybody's like made mac and cheese, like yeah. how, you know, like the, <laughs> Eat it right out the, the gross, pot the gross powdered cheese, like <laughs> where he's in his tiny ash trailer. That was I don't know. I just I loved Cliff Booth's character. I love how Brad Brad Pitt portrayed it, and then Leo, like I don't know, just they they obviously they just stole the sh- the show. Oh, I yeah. mean, anytime you have two actors that are just like that. I don't know. Those are like probably some of my favorite actors, but yeah. this was like. Yeah, weird... I was gonna ask how how much uh, exposure you guys have to them because I feel like I haven't seen them in too many things because I haven't really watched those kind of movies. Oh, dude, that I've much. seen them both in enough things to love. Oh yeah, them, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, like, even if it's yeah. only four movies, they're just good. Yeah, so I've yeah. seen like a couple, but like I mean, you know, I know that they're like high profile actors and stuff, but actually seeing them in this movie, I was like, holy shit, they are killing it! Like, jeez, oh man. Leo, I mean, he was in his I, stutters, his accent. I was like, man, yeah, his nervous so stutters good. when he gets into character, like he did. One of my favorite scenes, I think, in the movie is after he, um, he's they're like recording this this scene, and he forgets his lines. So he calls out for his lines a couple of times, and he just delivers the scene not as not up to his standards. And it's it's interesting because like I wonder if like. There's any aspect of Leo in that, just like how oh, sure. much of a perfectionist Leo seems because of how great of an actor he is. But he goes into his like trailer and <laughs> after it, and he's just like, just beating the shit out of himself mentally and verbally. Like he's yeah. just shouting and like, you, you know, you fucking idiot. Like if you don't, like you're going to go out there, if you don't deliver this scene right, I'm going to blow your fucking brains all Dude. over your pool. Like yeah. and he's staring just, right into the camera. Into the mirror, but also yeah, into the yeah, camera. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. That scene was so amazing. well done. <laughs> it was awesome. So well done. And see, I think there you talked about there being a bit of Leo in there. I think there's a bit of all of them in there because they've been yeah. in this game for a long time. Yeah. And they're kind of, you know, the sun setting is starting to begin. Mm-hmm. And I think everybody's kind of feeling exactly what he's going through. Yeah, well, Brad Pitt's, I think, like 55. He's, yeah, dude, he's, he's up there. He's yeah. up there. And I mean, Leo's been in the game for a long time. He's like 44, I think. And he, but he's been acting since he was young. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so it's like, and it, but everybody still loves him. But like at oh, yeah. some point, the time is gonna come where he just kind of folds into the rest of. Yeah. You know. Real quick, I want to just briefly talk about because I, I talked about like Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt and how well they work together. And I want to talk about the time. To- one of the times I think that Leo and another actor, another co-star, didn't work together, which was in The Great Gatsby. Which I think was like not a great movie at all by any means. The newer one, obviously, with Leo, and he was with um, uh, Tobey Maguire, was in that. And Tobey Maguire is just not a strong actor. Like it. Yeah. And so you would see scenes where Leo and Toby were like trying to mesh, and like Leo was just so many leagues above Tobey Maguire that it was just like this is not. Yeah. This isn't good. Like. Yeah. But that was obviously nowhere did it happen here because. I mean, Brad Pitt holds his own. Dude, when they're watching the episode that Leo shot that day or whatever together on the couch, it was like mm-hmm. the most mm-hmm. bro shit ever. Like, it was mm-hmm. so good. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, just like, that's a great scene. Yeah, that was a great jump. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like, yeah, that guy's a dick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gosh, that's like that the whole movie just yeah, like, like who else could romance, have, like, dude yeah. who yeah. else could have acted together like just that it like would have been casually you know? and I love even before that scene where like uh, Cliff Booth is dropping him off and he's just like I think Leo had, or um, Rick Dalton asked him like oh did you want to st- stay and watch the FBI he's like oh I got a six pack in the back like yeah I thought it was implied kind of thing and yeah, it was just yeah. like yes let's do this like let's <laughs> bro it out like yeah. such a great scene too the whole dynamic is weird in how they're like, like it's, you would think that Cliff Booth would live in his shadow, but it's like not the case. Right. Even though he's yeah. a stunt double, he's just kind of like cool with the way that his shit has turned out, doesn't really care about needing like this pool and all this shit. But at the same time, he gets to live that life in yeah. some way, you know? Yeah. Well, you could, I mean, the very opening scene where they're doing the interview where it's, it's um, Cliff Booth and Rick Dalton and... And they're like, oh, so the you as a stunt double, you carry a lot of the load of of uh, Rick Dalton. He's like, yeah, you could say that. You could say that I carry, and it's just like it's so true. Like he's yeah. not living in his shadow. He's like, I do a lot of the work. Yeah, I mean they have that. You know, we see it in the movie, the whole movie. He's yeah. doing all kinds of bullshit for him. 
Yeah, he's like, I'll fix my TV in 10 or whatever. <laughs> Which is why I think, like, a big part of Cliff Booth's character is loyalty, right? Like, he is super loyal to... What's his name of the thing? Rick? Rick. Yeah. yeah. Rick Dalton. Rick fucking Dalton. They've worked together for years, and you have the dynamic where it's kind of like, okay, Rick can tell Cliff to do something, and he'll just, like, make it happen, and it's all good, don't mm-hmm. worry about it. And then you see that same kind of thing with Cliff and his dog, where it's like this oh, yeah. kind of hand yeah. down of orders given, I guess. But his, yeah, the law is the thing with the dog, right. and, and Rick is, like, a I big th- piece of him. I think what I liked about, because... For, like, at some points, you kind of feel bad for Cliff. You're just like, man, he's just, like, kind of being thrown the scraps of things, and, like, he's got getting the short end of the stick. But there's this scene where you see uh, Rick Dalton kind of negotiating with, uh, who is it? I can't remember who he's talking to, but he's trying to get, he's trying to get Cliff work. Oh, okay. and, Russell's character. Yeah. yeah. And he's just like, he's like, come on. Like, you know, he's like, he, like he's just trying to help his friend out right. and he's really putting himself out there yeah. he's like oh I don't know my wife hates the guy like he this guy murdered his wife you know and right. it's like okay well I'll give him a shot and then that's when he fights Bruce Lee <laughs> dude which is such a cool about, scene too about that scene real quick. <laughs> let's talk about that was it was awesome so I don't know I don't know much about Bruce Lee but I f- wouldn't have thought that he was such like a cocky guy like just so like I don't weird. know that he is no I don't know if yeah he, but I'm just but, saying but because yeah. it was essentially a flashback because he goes back to him on the roof right. and he's like oh right yeah. so it's probably just like um, unreliable narrator or whatever like he's yeah. like telling what he remembers it's what is, Cliff remembered yeah. of the yeah there's no way he fucking dented that car that crazy right, right? <laughs> I don't know yeah no, but, but I, I want to talk about the actor who played Bruce Lee I think he did I, I think it was a good choice to keep the glasses on him mm-hmm. a lot of the time because it made it more believable because you couldn't fully see all the features of, of Bruce Lee but his voice sounded like maybe a little bit how Bruce Lee talked and like, yeah. you know, I don't know. I just remember like the scene, like you have to be fluid, like water, yeah. water can flow and shape, but it can crash. Like, and it's just like, I don't know. I feel like he, I feel like the actor did a good job. Oh yeah. I don't know about yeah. the cockiness, but again, maybe that's like the yeah, narrator's so perspective it. of it. Yeah. Yeah. I but, really know almost nothing about Bruce Lee. But when I saw that character, I was like, that fucking Bruce Lee? Yeah. He has the look. Yeah, it just seems like, yeah, Bruce Lee? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> to go back to the Rick Dalton and Cliff Booth characters, would you guys guess that those weren't real, like, people? Like, I could have sworn, like, I would have believed, like, if you said those characters are, were real people, real actors and stuff, I'd have been like, oh, yeah, sure. Like, yeah, well, so let's talk about, okay, because... I haven't read of anything about... That. Like I said, I just found out about, about this movie that it was directed by Quentin Tarantino. I didn't read anything about it. But it, are these... These are all real actors? Yeah, so Leo and Brad Pitt's characters, are, I'm pretty sure the only characters, like the people know. that are not real, that weren't real. Oh, guys, yeah. but all the people that they're... Everyone else was real people. Real okay, people. okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Which is like another Tarantino thing that we've seen... Like mm-hmm. Inglorious Bastards and shit, where you take your time to actually history. happen, yeah, yeah, yeah. change it. And it's cool. I think there's cool things to that. Yeah, for sure. Um, it was weird how Shannon is that her name? Shannon. Shannon. Sharon. Oh, Sharon Tate, Sharon Tate right. was the woman who was actually murdered, right? Yes. yes. By the Manson cult thing, and yeah. like in this movie, I felt like her character meant almost nothing. Yeah, except so you, for being the tie to the real world. Yeah, so that's what. I've seen people arguing about online is like if you had to have known about the Sharon Tate murders and all that stuff beforehand if it would have affected you the same way like if you'd have known what was happening and stuff yeah because I like knew that that's what it was about like I was like paying attention like I knew that that last scene was coming I just didn't think it'd go that way obviously but Mm -hmm. did you guys know about that before? I have no idea wait so what what happened with with Sharon Tate in real life versus the movie? so the three people that went to like the three dude people in the car, or whatever that drove up to yeah, the it was house. like the Manson murders. Where they, those three they, people they killed a they pregnant murdered, lady, right? Yeah, that was which was Sharon Tate. Tate. Those okay. three people yeah. were real people that went there, went into that house where they were having like their party or whatever. Right, right. And killed all those people like brutally, like I right. read, like no, yeah, yeah. Like, I've I've heard a lot about the Manson murders. Yeah. So. Okay, but they didn't go into that house. They went, in, which is why the re- yeah as so, James is saying the revisionist history. Kind yeah. Of, so Rick Dalton coming out and yelling at them like changed. That's where it splits. Is like uh, they're like, oh, let's kill this guy instead. Like I kill see. the guy, yeah. the people that taught us how to be violent. Or yeah. yeah. God. 
which I was, oh man, I was so stressed out because I knew that last scene was coming, but I wasn't expecting it to go like different. Like, I'm so glad I had, had no idea about yeah, how okay, Manson yeah, I was So you're all like saying out. that like her character didn't really matter that much, but I think it was Tarantino really like respecting her as, yeah as, okay as, yeah she was talking to like her, her family and stuff and like really got approval for this yeah and, like you know they had the really wholesome scene where she's watching her own movie and like being yeah. very happy about um people Reaction enjoying her as an actress and well, stuff like that and so i think he didn't want he, he didn't want the main focus at all to be manson or the mon- or the murderers or anything mm-hmm. like that yeah he kind of just kept her kind of in the back just to kind of really say fuck you to the Manson dude that's why that's why I like it is what it really was and he he wanted to respect her as much as yeah that's why I didn't say that I want to go on the record of saying that (coughs) I feel like there's there's a thing with with like pop culture now for whatever reason that everyone's obsessed with serial killers and like I think they're very interesting like just the minds It's, it's just interesting how somebody could do these types of things but I have like people that I have on social media that I see them sharing things like it's like a quote from Charles Manson and and it's just like oh the only person you should be afraid of is yourself and it's like oh god he's so profound it's like no he's a small (laughs) five foot nothing hillbilly nobody like Charles Manson's a a pussy you know like and I feel like the people idolizing him it's just like and I'm glad that it didn't go there the romanticization of murders yeah that's why I was so happy there was like Half a scene, basically, where they showed Charles Manson, and he, he got his ass yeah. beat. But fucking Cliff. No, that wasn't him. That was wasn't that, that was no, him, no, wasn't no, it? No, no, no. Charles that Manson is oh, the guy, I thought he was... guy that went to the house. Yeah, that was Tex or whatever. Wait, that wouldn't make sense though because no, oh, the, guy, the, the guy, the guy who stabbed no, the, the tire. Was Tex wasn't, wasn't supposed him? to be Charles Sorry, Manson. No, he's Tex. No, no, no. Tex wasn't supposed to be Charles Manson. No, no, no. Which one was Charles Manson then? He was the guy who looked like Jim Morrison walking up to the house, which was because they mentioned Jim Morrison, and I was like, "Fucking Jim Morrison." Yeah, looked like. Oh, Charles Manson. It was. He knocks on Sharon Tate's house. And her husband answers. Yeah, and, and asking like, if that are all creepy. Dude, yeah, 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 I was yeah. okay. I want to talk okay, about that yeah, scene a little bit too because when I saw that again, I, I went into this movie had no idea that there was a correlation between the Manson murders in this in this film, other than that it was also in the late '60s. Right. But when I saw quote unquote Jim Morrison like walking up to the house, I was like, is somebody going to be murdered right now? Like. Yeah. Just knowing what I oh, yeah. briefly knew. <laughs> like, I was like, wait. And then it didn't happen, and I was like, okay, no, this isn't a Manson movie. Yeah. Because I didn't, again, I didn't know anything about it, but... And yeah. then I was yeah, like, see, oh, wait, it is, kind of. That's why I was stressed, stressed out the whole time, because I knew something was coming. Yeah. 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 But they did, maybe they shot that scene, like, kind of eerily, like... Oh, yeah. You know, sure. just... Yeah. Yeah. No, no, like, the scene where, like, Jim, quote-unquote, Jim Morrison's, yeah. like, meeting... Yeah. Yeah. Because I was uncomfortable that the whole was time. Charles Manson, his character. Right. Right. Yeah. But okay, let's so let's <laughs> talk about um, it looks like him. Margot Robbie. I she wasn't in a, like a terrible like large amount. I think um, it was mostly about Rick Dalton and Cliff mostly Booth driving scenes. Yeah, <laughs> but so she was she a stunt double? Is that what that was? No, 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 she's no. an actress. So this is she is Sharon Tate. But the, what you would see on the screen when she's watching herself was the, the real the Sharon Tate. Oh, yeah, that was out of respect for the real Sharon Tate. They wanted to show her actual work. Oh, oh, was it for, for sure? It was the actual. It was scenes? yeah. Okay, because some of it I couldn't tell. It looked like it was like really edited to no. be. Okay, it was supposed to be her original stuff. Okay. Well, that confused me because I was like, "That doesn't look like her." That totally, yeah, and like, that's why, she like, kind of looks like her, but it's not. When her. when she was trying to get into the theater, she was just like, "Oh, well, well, I'm like part of the the cast, right? Like, so like, let me in for free." Yeah. And I was like, "Is this girl is like is she crazy or like is right. she?" And then like once it showed that, I just thought that she was a stunt double because she knew because it cut to the scene with her and. Yeah, um, like doing all of the like martial arts stuff. Exactly, and, and she like knew all of the, the play by play for the scene. I kind of thought the same thing because. It was just oh, okay, so weird. it was just okay, a tribute to, to. No, it was a little to, odd. That's it what was I a little read. odd. I was like, she's lying, right? But I, I get, yeah, that. I guess and maybe if you didn't made, fully know the history, yeah. you could easily. Right, yeah. yeah, like that we have both sides of that because like I knew who I knew that she was playing Sharon Tate, and I was just like, oh, there's like they don't know because she's not like the main star. You know what I mean? That's like what I was thinking. You guys just didn't think it was even her. 
Oh no! I, I like straight up thought that she was I just mean, being a stunt double, and only because it's not her in the well, yeah. things. But like, yeah. But yeah. So yeah. So yeah. I knew preview before even the movie started that it, that she was Sharon Tate. So yeah. But also, I, I my fully it enjoyed helped. the scene where Margot Robbie's just sitting in the theater and just like I so enjoyed watching her enjoy a movie. Yeah. Like, yeah. I just love <laughs> that so scene. Aesthetic. She was just so into it, and I think right. she like fully delivered, just like. I don't know, just the true appreciation for somebody watching their creation. Yeah. All I gotta say is fuck those nasty ass feet that are popping okay. up. Okay, Tarantino Tarantino has fetish. such a foot fetish. It's Had disgusting. It again. <laughs> yeah, it's disgusting. So many, why are they so it. dirty? I mean, that's real life, but. Well, she's a, lot a of filthy pain. hippie, but. Fucking nasty. Wait, which, which foot Both, scene are we talking about? All of them. <laughs> Any foot scene. The feet on this, the windshield is great. The foot on the windshield. Them and walking she, around in the trash with their nasty ass feet. She asks Cliff Booth like if if he wants his cock sucked or something, and he's like, "How old are you?" And she says eighteen. But like, it was weird because she like was she like leaning back and like she she exposed her armpit hair and it's just yeah. like it's like so okay, you'd be sixteen with armpit hair. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know if that was a. No, he played it safe on that one. He did. Yeah, kudos to. Yeah, that was an interesting, like, when she's leaning into the car, and it keeps shooting back to, like... On her ass. Quote-unquote, try to get um, Brad Pitt's perspective, or, like, or like just not his perspective, but to show him, but it's just, like, this is her ass. Yeah. Like, the whole time. It was awkward. Like, this guy's almost. holding up traffic, right? And it did it, like, it did it, like, like eight times. Yeah, like, it, it kept, kept shooting back kept, to yeah. it. His nasty-ass feet. Still yeah. can't get over this nasty-ass feet. Dakota Fanning pointing with her foot to the oh, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, Interesting. Disgusting. That was so disgusting. <laughs> uh, it was one real of quick, his... something stupid that I could not get over. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but in movies, when they're shooting in a car, there's no rear view mirror in the car, like, so you can see the actors and shit. Wait, uh, really? But I could I was like so hyper aware of it that I could not like not pay attention to it. It was so weird. <laughs> mm-hmm. So like yeah. when they were driving, when uh, uh, Brad time? Pitt, when Brad Pitt was driving <laughs> with <laughs> the half the girl uh-huh. to back to her place or whatever, it kept switching. It would show them without the windshield or the rearview mirror. I mean, and then sometimes they'd show them from the side and he'd be there. And I was just like, oh, I can't stand this. Yeah, right now. you know but, like, what was really bad. What was that. really bad was was when the camera was pointing out at the ranch and all the fucking crazies were standing around. And there was like nothing inside the field, but when Brad Pitt walked out, there was all of a sudden a bunch of like cars and shit around. Oh, that no, I didn't was, that. Yeah, that was inconsistent so. as fuck. I was like, where did all these cars come from? But yeah, that. Like it just showed like a full like oh, shot yeah, yeah. of like it was empty, like you know, it was just like dirt basically. Just them, right? Yeah, and then when he walked down, then there was like shit, and I was like, you would have obviously saw that in the shot, right? Yeah, like so obviously. Let's dive into the let's dive into the farm scene. <laughs> okay. Can we? Yeah. What did you want to say? But no, I just wanted to curse you guys to pay attention to fucking rearview mirrors in movies because okay. they're never there. I'm not gonna do that. I hate it. I'm gonna it's forget the, the next game, time I watch it. It's the movie. game of movies. I hope I forget the next yeah, time. Yeah. Oh, you have to look. There's for like it. a weird way that that mirrors <laughs> exactly. work in like movies, especially because it's like if it's there, it's blocking the actor, so you can't have it there. Right. Like, it makes sense, but it's really. But I feel like old old school style cars never really had really big rearview mirrors, did they? Yeah. I feel like they would have had. Like, even chunkier ones. Even chunkier ones? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But yes, the trailer scene. Okay, let's talk about the trailer scene. So The ranch scene. The ranch scene. Or the, the ra- I'm sorry, the ranch scene. So, I don't know, maybe this is kind of classic Quentin Tarantino where you're anticipating something big to happen. Like, it really leads up to, like... Oh well, well he's he's napping right now. Like you, you can't go look at him because he's he's napping. And, like you're just like, is he dead? Dude, like, for sure. He's I thought he was totally. Dead. Yeah, I thought yeah he was and, like, like everybody. His head off. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> his head was just gonna roll yeah, out of the I mean, bed. Just gonna, that's why it was so gross in there. But like, I totally liked that he wasn't dead. Oh yeah. Because he just like you just the direction of it just like oh yeah he's absolutely dead he's straight murdered or he's not even there one of the two like this is gonna be gross. But every single thing that that crazy bitch said was absolutely true. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm taking a nap because if I don't take a nap, then I'm watching the FBI movies and I fall asleep and she gets mad at me. And yeah. it's just like... And it's like, what, is she, what happens if she gets mad? It's every, like, well, nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's fun to, and it's just like, no, I feel that. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah sometimes a girl get mad. It's okay. 
But, yeah, it was just, I don't know. I'm so glad that he didn't go that direction because it was like, oh, yeah. oh, I guess we're good. Like subverting the, your expectations. Yeah, the way. music was just so ominous and, like, yeah. Dude, yeah, Dakota Fanning. I feel like the last time I saw her in a movie was The Cat in the Hat. She was probably like fucking twelve or something. I don't even remember. She, the last I thought she's time been I saw twelve her. for like the past. 12 exactly. Years. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen her in so long. I was like, oh shit. When I, when that scene was coming up, and because it didn't show her for a long time, remember? It like just yeah, shows it was, the back of her mm-hmm. sitting on the she's chair. She's gotta be older than us, right? I, she might be, right? Like, yeah, let's so be yeah. real. Like, we think of her as young, but she's well, yeah, probably I saw her our like fucking ten age. years ago. She's twenty-five. I mean, yeah, yeah, we're barely older than her. That's crazy. She yeah. doesn't look super different. Like, I recognized her. I was like, maybe she's uh, the Sharon Tate character. Like, I don't know. Yeah, it was hard to recognize her. For me. It was, yeah. I, I, I just totally did She had red hair, so. right? I think so, yeah. yeah. Was it red? Oh, I thought she, it was blonde. just like that. No, yeah. she, she was redheaded because, remember, he asked. Oh, that's right. And he was like, I don't fucking know. I'm, I'm blind. blind. Yeah. <laughs> she oh. was redheaded, yeah. <laughs> okay, you go. Yeah, dirty blonde at best, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, so let's talk about um, what were your favorite, not really like themes or anything, did you guys notice anything about the story as a whole? Did you know, did you, did you see how things were uh, ju- juxtaposed? Is that the word? That juxtaposed. Word. Juxtaposed. Um, in Rick's career and what was happening in the real world around him. Like hmm. the end of the golden age, quote-unquote, of Hollywood kind of thing. Um, I, I think that's kind of where I was going. Like, the age of, like, big superstars and, like, all these things, like, that kind of was dying down at that time. I feel yeah. like... You and it was, the, like, it was the rise of, like, the hippies, and it was the rise of that kind of stuff. Uh, uh-huh. um, so he was in those spaghetti westerns or whatever. Right. And one of the last ones that he does in America, the director wants him to be a hippie. Yeah, he's taking yeah. a total different uh, direction. Yeah, it's and not it's not the clean cut cowboy. Rick Dalton he, hates hippies. Yeah, he hates hippies. <laughs> Fucking hippies, like all the time. And it's kind of interesting to note that he's playing a hippie cowboy, not not really, but in a cowboy movie, and then the hippies are living on an old cowboy ranch that used right. to be filmed with movies. Um, yeah. What do you guys what do you guys think of that? Yeah, well it's interesting. There's like some there's just a big cross section there where you see two different worlds living in the others kind of thing where yeah. you have Rick Dalton who hates hippies and he is kind of in some ways forced to play a I guess you'd call it like a pseudo hippie and like some spaghetti western. Or well, yeah, this was still in the U.S. But he's in that character, and then you have the hippies literally living on a set that was just straight up cowboys. Yeah. So it's yeah, that is an interesting dynamic that they have. And there. even even the hippies themselves were sort of cowboyish too, where they had sort of like a the ranch horses, and they yeah. were riding yeah. horses and stuff a like tour that. Kind of thing. Yeah. So it was like a little. Mm-hmm. It was a little cross between both of those worlds. Yeah. That's interesting. Let's jump to the scene where <clears throat> we have Cliff Booth, who is... So we, we talked about the scene, but let's talk about kind of the beginning and more towards the end of the scene where Cliff Booth, he initially goes on to the ranch, and then the stuff happens that we talked about where you think the guy's going to be dead, yada yada. But after, everybody on the ranch, all the hippies just hate Cliff Booth, and one of them slashes... His tire. God, what a fucking scene when he comes <laughs> back. And Jay, how did, did... Talk us through this scene. Well, he basically finds out that homie who's supposed to own the place is fine. And, you know, he leaves and, like, the whole town is kind of staring at him. And, like, the girl who we give a ride to actually throws some shade at him about... I forget what she says. She, she, he, she was embarrassed. Blind. Yeah, she, she was said, embarrassed yeah. by how he handled the situation. It was like the 1960s version of saying that she was woke and he was not. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. And he gets to the car, you realize, oh, there's a flat and those nice white walls, you know, that fucking 60s vibe. So. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that pecker dude is just sitting on the 
this fence, like, oh, I did laughing that. at him. And, you know, badass Cliff Booth is just like, well, we've got a spare in the back, like, fix it. Oh, not even mad that it happened. Just yeah. like, well, you're really like, well, this is my boss's car right now. Yeah. yeah. You're lucky Go ahead and make it better. Go ahead and fix it. I thought he was going to fight all the fucking girls, dude. <laughs> dude, I thought they were going to say, yeah, I thought they were going to swarm him. I was like, this guy is out But, and then, but I also thought he was going to fucking kill them all because I was like, yeah. dude, this guy manhandled Bruce Lee. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> He's true. about to, like, fucking yeah. just fight off sh- swarms of women, like, yeah. <laughs> just to do it. Well, it was funny because. Yeah. He like the women were like stepping up in a little bit, and he was like, "You take one more step, I'm gonna knock his teeth, like all of his teeth out, kind of thing." And it was like, "Oh shit!" Like, yeah, yeah. God, uh, and the, they kept like, you know, they're just like, "I love you," like to the dude. Oh, that's was very weird. weird uh, cold fucking fish, hippies, like, man. Fucking hippies. Fucking hippies. But um, of course, the dude is not gonna fix it, so he gets his ass beat, and then, which I was like. When he started going through that whole deal, and then he starts putting his face in the hood and shit like that, I was like, okay, you've already got to deal with this tire, but now you're going to have to go and wash the car. Like, get the yeah, I was, yeah, I was looking for blood, blood on the windshield. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then he fixes it, I assume, right? They don't, like, mm-hmm. Yeah, I was like, I wonder it. how long it actually took to go find Tex and bring him back, because he... F- Change a tire and then he just in that time. Well, they had been on the route for a little while on the tour. Yeah, so. it was just the way it was shot. Yeah, the way it was shot, it feel like one continuous. Yeah, like, cohesive kind of thing. And then yeah, he was just. It was the only there. thing that Quentin Tarantino didn't show us what happened. <laughs> 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 uh, Staking Jesus, yeah, yeah, just drawn out. Yeah, yeah. The, each little thing, each little the luck whole ride back, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the entire ride back. It was gonna be and, three hours and forty five minutes. <laughs> yeah. The editors literally kicked Quentin out of the... No. <laughs> Extended cuts coming to Netflix. Yeah. All that yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it took a whole another hour of driving. Yeah, but they get, they get Tex, and um, Tex rads, rads back, like, that lady says, like, oh, somebody's beating the shit out of... I can't remember the guy's name, but... Yeah. Beating the shit out of this guy, and, and Tex runs back, and as the time by the time he gets back, driving off. Cliff is driving off. Yeah, so interesting it's thing safe. about just this area in general, all that stuff actually happened like the blind dude being basically uh taken advantage of or whatever like these girls will sleep with you and he's just like whatever I'll, it's fine like you guys won't stay here like that actually was real really like, yeah and um yeah the text guy all those dudes are real it's yeah really, text really is creepy. real yeah uh dakota fanning's character i looked it up um she actually tried to put a hit out on president gerald ford how do you really? wow. put a hit yeah. out on the president? <laughs> like, so what? She, uh, Did you go to hippie cult? She was know. served life in prison, but I think she just got out on parole. Recently? Oh, really? Recently-ish. Crazy, dude. That's so Recently-ish. crazy that this shit happened. God. Not in our lifetime, but like in the last... Yeah, well, yeah. Manson, Manson's up for parole all the fucking time. Yeah. Manson's not gonna dead. dead. Did he Wait, die? What? He died. Yeah. When did he die? Oh, he died like two years, two ago. years ago. Wow. Yeah. Really? I thought, I thought he was alive too. To be no, fair. No, no, Rans. I was, was like, because oh. when the movie, when I yeah. realized what it was, I was like, is this a ploy to like raise awareness about the fact that Manson could be out on parole soon? And then we oh, looked I it up, and it, it was like, no, he's dead. I didn't. I didn't even. Yeah, but, no, but he, he he died November nineteenth, twenty seventeen. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, okay. okay. I know. I know that he died because. Again, going back to like the whole glamorization of serial killers, and it's hard to even call Charles Manson a serial killer because, again, he was just some coward that had some cult following. Right. But like, just the people that were like kind of saddened by his death, and it's just like this. Again, I can't stress this enough. He was a nobody. He was a racist hillbilly, nothing, and like he had some Somehow hippie cult following yeah. because they were all hopped up on LSD. I read something about how he was in like the beginnings of joining like a Scientology. Oh, I saw that the other day. Yeah. 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 Who and was? Charles, Charles, Charles Manson. Manson. And that even he was like, "This is fucking weird." Yeah, and he so left they were early. Like, he was like, "If you are one of arguably the weirdest motherfuckers on earth, yeah, and you're saying that shit's weird." Well, so one <laughs> of the, one of the things that I have like, okay, let's let's talk about Charles Manson as much of a, a nobody he is is that he was. From what I understand, he was a failed musician kind of thing where mm-hmm. he wanted to kind of have this like this record deal and like all of this thing where like, oh yeah, like he was gonna be a big a big hit and like nobody kind of 
cared about him. Like he wasn't signed, and he, it was like almost like it was almost like Hitler, how Hitler had like his like failed art kind of thing, <laughs> mm-hmm. and it was just like Charles Manson was like, well, yep, he's a nobody, and like so he this is, was kind of his way of getting back at that industry, and Hollywood was kind of the uh, the martyr there that just took the hit, I guess. Yeah, so I guess, I don't know if this is completely right, I don't remember for sure, but, like, the house that he ordered the kids or whatever to, like, go in and kill everyone inside of it, Mm -hmm. he had, like, this weird grudge with whoever used to live there. Like, those people that they killed weren't even the people that he, like, had Mm -hmm. a grudge against. They just used to live there, so he's, like, go into that house and kill everyone that's in there. They were in the industry, I guess. Yeah, well, the people that used to live there were, like, more personal to him. Right, no, but, like, I think... like like, in that... And this movie... Like, at the end, it was just, like... I think we mentioned this earlier, but it was talking about how... Like, oh, well, as kids, like, we... All the media we consumed was about killing people. Like, let's kill the people that taught us how to kill people kind of thing. Uh So... Yeah, I feel like that might have been new. Just so that they can have a motivation to go into Rick Dalton's house instead. I think that was a That was a different house. I think that was a little stylistic flair that Quinn Tarantino added into it. Because he's always been a controversial... uh, director a mm-hmm. lot of his shit's nothing but fucking gore not nothing but gore but like yeah very so gruesome very gore shit. Like, and it's, and it's, like oh this is the tarantino shit yeah when yeah there was gore, so yeah. i think yeah. it's a it's a play on that where where he's like fuck I'm, I'm not supposed to be your fucking uh your role model or anything like that this is just my art and i'm gonna show it the way i fucking showed it like and that. that's the reason why he also fucking killed the manson family like yeah. yeah, just to say fuck and Hitler yeah, and Bastards. yeah, just to say fuck you. I, uh, there's all these horrible people who did fucking horrible shit. He's never killed anyone. His biggest crime to humanity is showing those nasty ass fucking feet. <laughs> <laughs> That's his biggest fucking crime. Damn. But it's it's a kind of like a big fuck you to I think the media and the way that he's perceived in his movies that he puts out. And yeah. I think that's what he wanted to show like a different flair from like the traditional. Yeah, Charles Manson. That's uh, a good take. I like that story or whatever. Yeah, I did. I I, I totally love that he didn't focus in on Charles Manson, but I think I, I remember you guys mentioned that um, when all of that gore started happening in the last scenes of of this film, it was like, okay, there's there's Quentin Tarantino. There's there's Quentin at his best. But I think for me, when I saw Quentin in this film, was just the kind of the like shift from let's talk about Cliff Booth and Rick Dalton and then let's like jump to Marco Robbie and like her character is as a Sharon Tate and it was just like these two separate stories that are happening simultaneously because I mean in Pulp Fiction that was like a lot of what it was like I mean this is back in the 90s where it was just I don't know. There was just like two separate stories that were happening, but they kind of commingled. But they were like the first very part of separate. the movie. The first part of the movie and the last part of the movie almost seemed like different movies. Yeah, yeah. I want to. I kind of want to touch back on that when when uh, Leo was acting after he had his little breakdown. He was like, "You're gonna fucking kill that next yes. scene." And he's with the little girl on his on his lap and everything, and he like pushes her down. Like fuck! You thought you were watching that movie at that point. Like you almost yeah, forget dude, that. Yeah. You almost forget that you're watching an actor acting when I was, in another movie. When it was I was like, watching was that weird. scene, I literally, as it was happening, I was just like, "Man, like Leo just threw that girl on the floor." Mm-hmm. And then they they mentioned that later. Like the little girl was like, "Oh no, it was okay. Like I had pads on." Like <laughs> yeah. so, but I was just like, "God, like this is so so interesting that like." We're watching a movie about a movie being filmed where you're worried about, or what I was worried about, like the well-being of the little girl who was acting as an actor. You know, like yeah. it was just oh god, it was. I think it was done well, and and then of course I have to mention, and it's in one of the what is it called, the previews or the uh, trailers, the trailers for the movie, where she like after the scene she goes up to. To Rick Dalton, she was like, "That was the best acting that I've ever seen." Yeah. Dude, and you're just like, reaction. "I'm Rick fucking Dalton." Like, <laughs> yeah, it's so, so good. good, man. God damn it, Leo is such a fucking good actor. Yeah. What did we ever do to deserve 
Leo. Dude, and after that only, little girl, though. No, she Her was phenomenal. She's reading the book and he's. She's reading the book and like. She's like, oh, I'm not going to bother you. She's like, I don't know, are you? Like, it was just like so, like, like, God, I love this little girl. She's... He's all coughing up a lung. Yeah. She did so much real name. She did such a great job. I mean, speaking of that whole thing, you know, the whole we're shooting a film about shooting a film thing. Mm -hmm. It's only been around for a little while now, but it is interesting. Yeah. There were shots of that The disaster artist to mention. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There were shots of that set where it looked like, like at some point I was like, "Damn, Overwatch really fucking nailed it with that Hollywood <laughs> oh, map." Oh yeah, it's yes, like, it's the same <laughs> That's shit. That's so weird. Sort of yeah. Western shit. It was Yo, like, le- uh, side note: this uh, talk about video games for one moment. Like, my favorite part of like the whole movie, even though I said I hated how long it took for them to drive and everything. But like San Andreas, yep, GTA San Andreas. How how? Oh, I think you're gonna say Vice City, probably more. Vice City? No, Just the lights and stuff. And no, the no, because Vi- Vice City is more New York, and San Andreas is more definitely okay, okay. Hollywood, California. California Vinewood, yeah. Vinewood. They have the Vinewood. And, like, just, like, the driveways, because you could buy a house in GTA yeah. up in the Hollywood Hills, and it's that same fucking, like, that curvy, little curved driveway yeah. up God, into the hills. So crazy. And that, I guess that was my favorite. I was just like, oh, this is, like, I guess my biggest connection to, like, that world of that time. I mean, I guess it's, uh, San Andreas is probably 90s, right? Yeah. Late 90s yeah. or whatever, but... That's funny, that yeah. curve, that curve, yeah, that way, that's yeah. immediately it's what I so, thought was Yeah, GTA. it's so much <laughs> well, like they GTA. they use that so yeah. much, where they have, like, they have... Um, Cliff and and Rick driving up that lot so many times, but they also have those oh, crazy yeah. super weird painting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those super, super weird. It, it's almost like a fucking like the Shining type of like here's Johnny. <laughs> like it's just like the, <laughs> the face. But um, you also have the hippies drive up there and like. <laughs> Rick Dalton comes out with his fucking margarita <laughs> yes. in the pitcher <laughs> still in the blender yeah. still. And he's just, he's like, get the fuck out of here. Like, this is private. God damn, that, all of that was Dude, just so good. So good. much anxiety. I was like, yes. he's going to die right here. That's I know. It, right? I was like, I was like, I thought he was a real person. He I was like, like, he's being so aggressive. I was like, he's yeah. being. But you loved it because that's who me. Rick Dalton yeah, was, but right? That, no, that's both of them. Could right. you imagine having the balls? Uh, to Hell tell no. that fucking kid to fix your tire? Hell no, no, that's so fucking crazy. These people <laughs> literally don't beat care. The shit out I think, of it. I, yeah. yeah, I think like that's like a kind of a time period a, to thing. show them. Well, time period, but also it kind of shows they're at the end of their days. They're like they're already past oh, their days. Nothing to lose. And they're just like fuck it. They're like, what are these fucking <laughs> kids gonna do to me? Yeah. Fix my fucking tire because I don't have fucking nothing else to do. Like, yeah, I was thinking about that. I was like, he's on his cell phone to like call for help. Like, he's just stranded. <laughs> yeah, he's just like, I don't fucking care. Like, well, like, and the thing about it is, like, he was fully capable of fixing it himself. Yeah, but he was, but just he was mo- not about yeah, to let that yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's fixing. He's like, I don't know what the fuck he's doing on the roof. He's like banging a wrench on the fucking antenna for the yeah. thing. Oh, yeah. But he's just like, he's just a handyman, and you're just like. When I initially saw that scene where he asked the kid to, to fix his tire, I was like, oh, like, he's just going to fix the tire real quick and be on his way. But he's like, no, no, no. This is your job. This is your doing. You're, yeah. you're doing this. So. Yeah. God. Just balls. Just big balls. Just big big fucking balls. balls. But also just, I, don't, I think it's just general, like, they fucking have nothing yeah. else. They're just like, fuck yeah. it, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it's so probably Italy stuff. That show was pretty interesting. Like that made it feel so real. The I was like, this was Western a real actor. The yeah, when he went when he flew yeah. to Italy and did yeah. all the, the Italian. And then movies. he was he was uh, uh, Rick Dalton was flying in first class, and then you see He's Cliff Booth up in coach. Yeah, the unlimited margarita or Blood, the unlimited Bloody, Bloody Marys. Yeah. But he's like to- he's like totally fine with it. Like Cliff right. Booth is like, yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. Okay, so back, okay. Back to the like the bro shit. Like I was like, oh man, they're gonna like not talk to each other they're done now and like no they're gonna get back to LA and just fucking party like dude goodbye you're my fucking bro like, yeah, yeah it's so yeah. great I love it yeah. so much and then to go back to to that scene where it's very scripted where you literally have Quentin Tarantino casting that right like that was his voice I'm fairly For certain what? he's he's who is narrator? the narrator he's who's Kurt Russell 100% it was definitely Kurt Russell Kurt Russell narrating the times and stuff? Yeah. 
the fuck? Yeah. I, I thought it was I know Kurt Russell's voice is my favorite actor. I thought that was Quentin. <laughs> but, okay, no, why? Was, because Quentin kind of has, like, no, he but has why, the, why was it Kurt oh, Russell? I don't know. Just for no reason? Maybe. He's a... Can, can, we, get a, can we get a fact check? All right. Check it out. Dude. No, I just... <laughs> no, I just... I'm just curious to... Why? So that was another yeah, thing. Was there a, a Tarantino that. cameo? He has his... He well, that's what I was going to say. I didn't see it. I didn't see him in this one. It was Kurt Russell. It was. It was. Was there a Tarantino cameo? Can you look that up for me? I guess there... I mean... I, I thought he was a right? narrator. But, no, okay. So did you guys stay for the after credit scenes? I yes. Could, I could not fucking Wait. muscle myself we, to really? fucking do it's it. Really? It's only one. It was, it was a little sin, funny so thing. fucking long. Was, it, was, was just it the, the cigarette apple cigarette thing? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That I mean, we kind of saw it, but... Yeah, okay, I was so just trying to get the fuck out of the goddamn theater. Dude, that's, please. that's so funny, because <laughs> it felt long, but it wasn't a burden. Like, I wasn't, like, upset that it was long. I was Some like, of it was very burdensome for me. Like, <laughs> yeah. Goddamn driving Some scenes. Some of the pacing was really slow. I was yeah, see, like, I don't wow. know. I appreciate all of it. No, I, I was in it... I, I, I didn't think that the pacing was bad. Um, Let's take it back to so you said that when they were smoking in the Mexican, re- Mexican restaurant... The cuts back and forth with Kurt Russell narrating over them, that felt so weird. Like, all these different things that felt weird were solved by the movie being called Once Upon a Time. It just felt like this whole thing was a fantasy, obviously, because the ending was new. It wasn't right. what actually happened. It was, like, ideally what would have happened, obviously. But I feel like that's what I solved all these weird things about the movie. Yeah. I mean, they, when I left the theater and I was driving home and shit like that, I justified the movie to myself by saying this was a story about Fantasy. things that could have happened at a place in time. Yeah. It was just a story. Yeah, exactly. Story of redemption. It's like what films should be. It's just stories. Did you not feel it was a story of redemption? Redemption for what or who? For Rick. And clip. Oh yeah. Okay. So, I saw yeah. a comment on Reddit that I want to bring up that was okay. very good. I'm all, I'm already pissed about you for looking up Reddit threads, but we'll we'll go ahead and. <laughs> okay. Why you mad? He said this whole movie was an elaborate setup or a payoff for a, a simple joke. So he said I'm one pool party away from being in the yeah. next whatever that guy's name is movie. The Polanski. biggest director. Yeah, his name's Polanski. 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 Something like that. The pool Polanski. party being. The flamethrower, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> and then he goes to the party next door. That's it, right? That's Hold on. I Hold thought on. that was super funny. I don't know. It's time. It's time that we talk about the final scene. We've we've yeah, talked let's about just it talk a little about bit. This fucking scene. Because this was the scene that was the most important. It was, some might argue, the most Quentin Tarantino f- scene in the movie where the hippies are storming their house of a... Uh, Oh, LSD high acid. Brad Pitt? Acid. What? It's just dipped in acid. The same acid is, is it L- the same thing? Acid oh, is LSD. It's just like... Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so this is the time where you kind of have like the whole movie kind of wrapping up and God, like what? <laughs> <laughs> just this scene, like again, I, I want to bring this up again. I didn't know whether to turn away in disgust or to laugh. And I think I did both at different times. Yep. But the hippies are storming the house. I never look away for that shit. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't, but I, like, yeah, I, you I, think like about I wanted it. to. I've, I've been yeah. here for two and a half hours. I'm going to watch the whole thing. Yeah, no, I did it. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I, I did not. could have walked out two hours ago. <laughs> yeah. But you have the hippies storming the house that is inhabited by Cliff Booth. And his um, wonderful dog. Rick Dalton's mm-hmm. wife, who is asleep. And then Rick Dalton is chilling on the pool in the back. And then, yeah, like, as Taryn said, his wonderful well, dog. Oh, Cliff's wonderful dog. Sorry. Yeah, Cliff's wonderful dog. Brandy. Brandy, yes. I could not think really of Really similar to Kurt Russell's character's name, right? Randy? Randy. Wasn't it Randy? Yep. That's it. Oh, yeah. Oh, Dude, weird. what a dog. God, Fucking that's all it took. <laughs> that's all it took. So, okay, who wants to break this scene down? Because um, there's a lot okay. to unwrap here. I want to start right before they get there. So if any of you guys seen Stranger Things, I'm gonna say no. Absolutely not. I have not. No. I've saw, I saw the first God. two episodes. Yeah, I saw uh, three, three, three. Parts Probably of the first the season. Very disappointing. Anyway, that's okay. The third season is the best season. That just came out. Blah blah blah. 
There's a new character played by Maya Hawk, which is the girl who drives the car away when they arrive at the neighborhood. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, she, she cowards out. Yeah. So yeah. her, she is the child of Ethan Hawk, which is probably known as the police guy. I don't know. I'm sorry, the police guy, something like that, in the Nolan Batman films. Oh, yeah. Um, and Uma Thurman, their child is that yeah. girl, which is crazy. She's, like, pretty old. Pretty old, yeah. Oh, anyway, she's in it. That was weird for me because she's just... I just watched her in Stranger Things. So. I was wondering why there wasn't any Uma Thurman blood in this movie, but apparently there was. So. There was. Her daughter was in it. A lot older than I would have figured. But... Me too. Okay. So we get to that. They drive up. This fucking muffler is making all kinds of noise. Rick Dalton comes out with his margarita blender. Starts yelling at these kids. She drove the car away. They got... There's... Oh, there's no getaway car. The stakes are raised. These fucking kids walk up after Rick Dalton yells at them with the margarita blender. Like, alright. We're going to this house. We're going to kill everyone inside. They send the white face girl plan. around. Yeah, that actually happened. They fucking send the like that girl looks like a lot like the actual person. They mm-hmm. send her around to find a back door or whatever. They get inside and we find Brad Pitt high off his ass, drunk off his ass, feeding his On dog LSD. Yeah, no, yeah, he's high shit off of LSD and uh, there's that the- beautiful scene with the lights. He, so like, good. I was like, light, oh, you know? this is a plot point. He's going to turn off the lights. They can't see him or something. But Yeah, no, he... Well, he turns off... Funny, the, though. Wait, the uh, the lights are off? No, he, well, the lights are dead. The lights are off, and then he turns them on because he's just like, okay, let's like... Because he hears some shit, and then he turns them on, and he's like, that's too bright because he's high as shit. Yeah, but the, before that, when he's... There's those directional lights on the bar or whatever, and he's just like kind of like a cat. Swiping at them. He does that a couple of times. Doesn't best, he? The best line is uh, previously when he gets the acid cigarette and uh, Rick says, My booze doesn't need a buddy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then he's about to take his dog out. What, what was her name? Brandy. 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 He's about to take Brandy on a walk and he like goes for a cigarette and he sees... Dude, the LSD laced cigarette, and he's like, Meh, good a time as any. Yeah, that was so stressful. I was like, he's dead. He's fucking dead. They're gonna drive up he's on him. He's not dead. And they're gonna recognize him and kill him. That's what I was feeling when I was watching it. Well, I mean, I would, like, okay, again, to go back into Quentin Tarantino's directing or direction of, like, just film in general, where he was, you show the guy, or, like, the guy that they were, like, supposedly had killed back in the ranch. And he was just like, okay, this is what the audience is expecting versus, like, this is what's actually going to happen. Okay. So that might be another another scene of that, or, like, another rendition of that. Yeah. I liked when he first got the acid cigarette, and he stashes it, and he's like, hey, don't smoke this on accident. Oh, I thought for sure Don't, don't smoke all of this. That. Yeah. Save well, me some. Don't yeah. smoke it on accident. But if you want some, you can have some. Mm-hmm. But if you have some, don't smoke all of it and save me some. 75 cents for that thing, dude. 50 cents. 50 cents for that thing. You know what's so cool? Okay, and... And, okay, this is maybe a... Example of, like, maybe how little I know of different directors. But I feel like Quentin Tarantino will foreshadow into things that are going to be the opposite of what's going to happen. Because you see... You see Cliff Booth put the cigarette away and like, hey, don't smoke all of this. <laughs> Finger gun snap. Like, don't smoke all of this. And you're just like, okay, like, maybe Rick Dalton's going to get half his ass an on accident. LSD like on accident. Things. But, like, it's like, no, that's not at all what's going to happen. Yeah. And so, like, I don't know if that's just, like, a direction that, like, maybe, you know, yeah, what he goes for. Meant, I feel like it was meant to be this week I, right I, because I it, it was like you accident. you i mean we've watched a lot of movies and we we see things that happen and we're like hey don't don't open that door you know like because yeah. that's bad things I mean, are gonna that happen emphasis on they that always do thing yeah yeah but this it just didn't happen and you know cliff booth is just like huh eh, good a time as any let's smoke this lsd but 
He's got two great lines. One when he initially starts smoking it. And I forget what he says. Right when they're about to start walking, he's like, you know. And away we go. Yeah. yeah. And away we go like that, or something. Yeah. But then when he's getting pulled away in the thing to the ambulance, <laughs> yeah. he says another yeah. thing like that. Which might even be in the way we go or something similar. Yeah, or just like, you know. What what does he say like halfway through? Like as he's walking his dog, he's just like, the train has left the station or something yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. he's the just like, the station. this is it. <laughs> you know, like I'm feeling it. God. Okay, so let's fully get into this scene where you have Cliff Booth high off of his ass. You have these hippie fucks who are storming the house. You have uh, Rick fucking Dalton chilling in his pool. Chilling in the pool. Headphones. Headphones on. And all these hippies are just trying to go in there and slaughter everybody. And, um, I don't know, this was just, like, such a big, like, this was, this was a point, if you didn't know before going in that this was a Charles Manson type of, like, they were going to reference it a lot, yeah. this is when it was like, okay, this is, this is the Charles Manson murders. And so, everything leading up to it, I think, was just like, I don't know, it was just like, okay, like, here we are, like, it was, this is this is happening now, right? So yeah. Okay. So James, like, how let, like let's get into how did you feel? Like there was one person who was like, oh, maybe I forgot my knife in the car, and like I'm about to head out. Like, what? Walk us through this scene a little bit. So like they're they're riding up and uh, homies trying to like really uh, rally the troops up, mm-hmm. and. Um, He's, he's trying, yeah. Tex is trying Tex, to yeah. really hype everyone up, and he's like, he's like, are you really doubting what he said, Manson? I don't even think they mentioned his name. Did they mention his name? Charlie? Charlie, Charlie, Charlie yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely intentional, like not yeah. trying to make it about him. Yeah. 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 Um, so he's trying to rally the troops. Uh, that one girl bitches out. Yeah. And then white face, whatever. I don't know. She calls her white. Who calls her? Uh, I don't know. Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt oh calls God, her yeah. white face <laughs> for some reason. Um, she fucking goes on a whole nother level and just is like, we're gonna oh, put, we're gonna chop off their dicks and put them in their mouth, and everyone's like, yeah, fuck, that. let's fucking. Do <laughs> let's that. fucking full, full send, yeah. Let's <laughs> let's they they go on like a little nostalgia trip. Yeah, Rick Dahl and I used to have a fucking. Yeah, they're like stoked yeah, that they that saw him. Yeah, they're like they almost idolize him in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they did. They did for sure, and they just wanted to kill some idols because like they taught us to kill. Or they taught us to kill, and it was all violence. So why don't we show them what we've learned? And uh, so they push the house, and they have a plan. And then there's like, I mean, they break in at various points. Like the two are in the front of the house. One goes around the back, or whatever. And there's, like, moments of confusion. Like, Brad Pitt's not exactly scared because he's kind of a badass. And he's like, yeah. hey, whatever the fuck's about should. to happen, I can make this happen. <laughs> but he's also real? like, are you real? Like, he's thinking, <laughs> he's I'm, as real as a, I'm as real as he's a like, donut. And they just yeah, laugh. I was second. like, what yeah. is happening, dude? The whole thing was kind of weird. And then he's like, wait, I know all of you. Yeah. yeah. He recognizes Dude, them. okay, that's, like, the worst shit is, like, the line he says is, like, what does he say? I'm the devil and I'm here to do the devil's business or something? Yeah. Like, that's mm-hmm. a fucking real thing that that dude said in real life. Oh, okay. But they make fun of it because he's like, no, it was something stupider than that. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like, Rex, no. It was something like, yeah, text. No. Yeah, there text. It is. Oh, text. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like, just totally making fun of all this bullshit that happened in real Which, life. Which, like, thank you, by the way, to, like, yes. just to fucking take a giant shot of, like, all these fucking. Pieces of shit. What else to call them but idiots who are, like, idolizing these. Psychopaths who like are nothing. They like have all of this following about like people who are high as shit off of LSD. If you're just like some hippie who's following some cult leader, there's some problems. Yeah. <laughs> so much. I mean, it was a intense scene. I mean, oh all yeah, hell breaks loose. The gore side of things comes out. Yeah. So like, I guess I was the only one that knew what actually happened so I was fucking 
so anxious about all this. I was like, they're all yeah. dead. They're fucking dead. What like, actually happens in I was like, like, Charles Manson scenes or like... In real life. Yeah. Okay. Well, like, I knew about that, but I didn't know that this movie was going Oh, there. yeah. And no, I'm saying like, when they went there, I was like, oh, they're going to kill all of them. Yeah. I was like, yeah. so stressed out. I was like, this is it. They're going to fuck... Like, I hope... Like, I just figured they would reenact it because, I don't know. Right. I wouldn't expect someone to just take a different turn like that, but... When they did, I was so happy. I was like, when he threw that fucking can of dog food at that girl's face and started fucking them up, I was like, oh shit, like, it's turned around, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, when, when, because I, 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 like, illicitly remember when um, Margot Robbie's character was pregnant, and I was just like, okay, like, in the Manson murders, like, they kill a pregnant woman. I was like, they're going to go to the her house. But it just didn't happen that way. Thankfully so, but, like, God, like, the way things turned out, like, it was so, God, it was, like, so, like, stupid, and, like, it was just, like, maybe, like, the scene from a low-budget horror film, but I couldn't have asked it to be any other way, like, filmed any other way, because, like, the way things turned out was just beautiful. Dude, you say low-budget, but... Jesus Christ, the girl that he slams into the posters and then the fireplace and stuff, that looked oh, yeah. too real. I was no, like, but, but, fuck. but like, yeah. I'm not saying that it didn't look real, like, as far as like. But just like what happened, you mean? But I'm what? saying like, this is something that would happen yeah. in a low budget film. Okay, I see. Like, yeah. where it's just like, okay, like, let's just do some crazy fucking shit. But it just, it looked almost too real at some points. And again, like, let's go back to like the like, do I turn away or do I laugh? And I. Again, I did, kind of did both. Like, I yeah. didn't turn away, but I laughed a lot, and it was just like, this is well, the, kind of gruesome. The character they refer to as Whiteface, like, takes it to, like, a Her million and a half. Too. Ooh. Like, it's, she just starts going fucking insane, and, like, flailing, and running, and, you know. I thought she, that she accidentally shot him. Yeah, me too. Like, yeah. But he got knifed. I, dude, yeah, see, life. even if it... They made it seem like he was shot. Yeah. Even that it, even though it changed a lot, I still thought it was gonna happen, like, all this stuff, like, accidentally, like, shoot them. She's shooting in the air like a fucking yeah. crazy person. Like, yeah. She crashes through shit. the door and... And the Rick fucking Dalton is just like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. He finally realizes what's happening, and he decides that it's a great idea <laughs> to walk into his shed, which they foreshadowed yep, earlier. They did. Yeah. His flamethrower from a previous cast was just stored in his shed. And he he hops that, that puppy on and he just <laughs> torches that bitch. Okay, it still worked or whatever. He like says. the fourth yeah. of July, man. It was Jesus Christ crazy. crazy. It was like it was Dude, like, why wouldn't she just go under the water? When I was watching oh, it, no, like, because she was out of her yeah, goddamn I see, yeah. When I was watching it, I was just like, I can't believe all of this is happening right now. Like but I like just didn't question it. I just like loved it. As I was yes, watching, I was like, yeah. this thank you for like I just appreciated it so much. Even yeah. how ridiculous it was, I appreciated the ridiculousness of what happened in that scene. Yeah. Yep. It was another just classic Tarantino. Yeah. Shit going on. The flamethrower is cool. The, <laughs> so but cool. it's cool when he brings it back up later when the neighbor comes yeah, down and yeah. it's yeah. like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> He's like, from <laughs> that movie? He's like, yeah, it happened. <laughs> yeah. So let's, let's break this down. So the hippies infiltrate the the house um there's three of them cliff booth and his dog dude yeah so kill two of them tex got him easy i feel like jesus christ he didn't get his face slammed into a fireplace he got his dick bit off though by the dog yeah the he dog wasn't having a good time easy i don't know he compared fucking... to being your, having your face smashed into brick or she being probably, lit on fire with a flamethrower she was probably so. dead the first honestly i'd second rather yeah. i'd rather have any of those rather than get my dick bit off <laughs> by a fucking large okay pool. fair enough but still i think i feel like they forgot about it because really you're quick, alive and your weird. dick's getting bit off like, yeah you're alive exactly with a yeah. flamethrower Exactly. You're just burnt. No, you're just exactly. you're, you're probably alive dead. Still. Yeah. Well, yeah. like the she was just thing. like screaming so much. Like so, she she ran like the the white faced black haired girl like runs through the window into the pool. That's when Rick Dalton is just like, "What the fuck is going on?" 
And she's like just screaming. Dude, like, that was just... one of the points where my theater was so loud. Her screams were fucking like pierced my like brain. In... Yeah. It but was what? Okay, so like... loud. And okay, one thing that is just like, what the fuck led him to just flamethrower this bitch? He had no fucking. He's fucked up. He's drunk. No, as but shit. he had no like previous. Uh... Like knowledge she of had a gun. gun. She was shooting it off all yeah. over the place. But who's to say that she was an enemy at that point? What if she was someone that was just she looking for help? She wasn't Brad Pitt or his wife. That's I feel like true. that's what yeah. it was. Yeah. Why else would you someone would else be you? Out? You would, yeah. Well, no, it's, obviously. It's, 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 it's outlandish. No, I wouldn't it's wild. It's crazy. Someone, but, but it's... I don't know. I'm the just trying logic, to The actual real logic is not there. Yeah, like, that's why I'm, I'm trying to figure out why. Flame no, throw some random screaming chick. That's interesting, chick. though. But okay, but would you, if your entire life has you consisted of you playing these crazy characters who do crazy things in crazy situations? Yeah, you've done it before. Yeah. When oh, you're quotes. like, yes. something's happening. Get my flamethrower and fuck him up because that's what you've done. You still like, had that, like. No. Just her screams at, at and that like point, everything. I was like, was the just... flamethrower is not the weirdest thing happening right now. I mean, it might be, but like, right. it's fine. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like something that's explained and it's like a callback. Right? Yeah, because like when, if it just came out of nowhere, it'd be like, what even the fuck when he is goes this? to fix his antenna, it's in the shed. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was like that's kind of the foreshadowing of it. It was like, right, it was already there. Yeah, so that happens, and then they're fine. The dog, oh, I love it. The dog runs over and gnaws at the door and is like, let me in with the, the wife or whatever in there. Yeah. Safe it back there. Yeah. And they're yeah. talking to the the cops and the paramedics and stuff. Yeah, and then um, Cliff leaves. He's... Dude, it looked like a hearse. I was like, is this like some weird... He got he's stabbed in the, in the side. So, yeah, I don't know. And he leaves and like, <clears throat> Rick Dalton is just like, oh, you know, like, I'll see you tomorrow. You know, yeah, like, and it's just, like, Cliff is just like, oh, I'm, like, I'm good. And then the paramedics leave, the police leave. And then you have their next door neighbors, you know, the big shots, the real big shots. Yeah. He's like, yeah, hey, that what the fuck happened? And he's like, oh, you know, some hippies came in, they tried to break in and kill us. And, is so everyone okay? okay? Yeah, yeah and, he, and he's the just like... The hippies aren't, those fucking hippies aren't. damn sure, whatever. Yeah. He's like, well, you know, we're a little shaken up, but, you know... Um, my buddy and his dog killed a, killed two of them, and, uh, you know, I torched, I torched <laughs> like, the last one. Torched? Yeah. And he's like, did you use the flamethrower from that scene in that previous movie you were in? And he's just like, yeah, matter of fact, I did. Like, it was just like, what the fuck is going... <laughs> Like, just the matter of Dude, fact was... way that this happened and, like, how calm Rick Dalton was. Dude, he got excited when he noticed, like, the different, like, oh, it's from that episode of that thing. And he was like, no, he yeah, but like, perk up. Yeah. He's like, oh, shit. Like, he was, yeah, he was more interested in, like, his him being noticed than, like, the fact that he just murdered. Yeah, exactly. Murdered maybe yeah. the wrong word, but, like. Just defended himself against like three hippies who were trying to kill his family. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just like it's just like his whole character was based around him falling out of the limelight, and that was like, oh, people still right. they're right. still aware. I just did that shit in real life. Maybe it's yeah. more real now. <laughs> and then you have the last scene, which is, you know, Rick Dalton being invited into this like kind of weird after party after you murder three people, like. And just like, oh, yeah, like, oh, this is Rick Dalton. And, and you have, you know, Margot Robbie, like, oh, you're you're a great actor. Like, mm-hmm. she, like, recognizes him. And it's just like, I don't know. It's just like what he wanted. It's yeah, just like I everything that he wanted. The weird payoff of that joke. Exactly. Like, yeah. yeah. But the crazy thing is when he walks up to those that group of people, those are the people that died in real life. All those people are the actual people that were actually murdered. Which is fucked up, because it's like... I mean, it's fucked up, yeah. but it's also, like, kind of cool. It's like, oh, shit. This is, like, what could have happened. Like, yeah. it could have just been fine or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Could have lived on. Let's wrap this movie up. Let's uh, kind of go into it with our ratings. And I think I would like to start with James. Mm-hmm. Maybe a little critical of the movie. I think, I think that's 
valid, yeah. but um, James, one to ten, what'd you feel about this movie? Uh, initial thoughts. The more I talk about it, the more I actually maybe like it more. But I'm gonna give it a six point seven five. Oh my goodness. Okay. Oh, we're doing point zero numbers. Six point seven five. It could be James. six point nine. Six point right. seven five. Right. Let's wow. jump um, ahead. Let's go to J. J. One to ten. What do you rate this movie? Uh, the pacing started out good. Ended out slow. Once I made the Manson connection, it was a little bit better. Granted, I saw it a couple hours ago. I don't know. It's like a. It's not my favorite Tarantino. I don't think it's like groundbreaking. I think it's like seven at best. Wow. Okay. Crazy. Seven at best. So J is great. seven at best. Oh yeah. Six, acting is great. Six. The six that I give is is based on acting alone. The point seven five is just. I guess okay. whatever. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean by the acting? The acting was so fucking strong that it was oh, yeah. worth a six. Carried it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the acting was great. <laughs> right. so okay, we got Sorry, James. We got Jay. Taryn, let's hear your rating. I'm surprised how low you guys' scores were for what we were saying. I'm not. You were about saying it. it's not groundbreaking all this stuff. It's like for 2019, this movie is so fucking unique. Like I loved it. All of okay, it. so like I, I I could I can agree with that. Like it's not the fucking run of the mill bullshit that we've been seeing in Hollywood well, okay. lately. It's a new fresh take on a story that's been told before, I guess. So even then, you can't say that it's groundbreaking. It's just a twist on a story that's been told. Here's the thing: Have you seen Bad Times at the El Royale? I've not. <laughs> That was a better movie than this. Yeah, and the plot is almost it's right. almost Stay tuned for next identical. Episode. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, we're not movie. talking about you guys' ratings on other movies. We're talking about <laughs> I, Taren But right you're now. saying uniqueness. I'm saying this has been for 2019. Okay, okay. But, no, but this was disclaimer, 2018. Disclaimer: this like, A lot of people said. say that the bad times at El Royale is like not a, good. I've only seen bad things about it. No, they say it's no. a ripoff of Tarantino. Oh, and I think it's everything Tarantino does right. And done well. And That's what with, it is. And, and, and it's a it's fucking and it's two and, and it's like a two hour and forty five minute long movie, movie. But it it's doesn't Drew feel Potter. that long. It it's fucking flows. Put together well. It's, it's such a all story. The come anyway, it's it. this derail this, this movie. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, I, I want to see. Taryn, you have the floor. Taryn, you have the floor. I think it's extremely unique for what the movies are like in our climate of twenty nineteen. Like. I don't know. I think the acting was amazing. The pacing was fine to me because I love those long shots. The driving scenes and stuff, I fucking loved all those all those scenes. Okay, so the acting was great. Pacing was fine to great. I don't know if that's the thing. Fine to good. Yeah. I would give it a 9 out of 10. I fucking <laughs> loved this movie. Nine Dude, out of 10. it felt wow. long. It was long, but it didn't, like, not in a bad way at all. I love long movies. My favorite movie is Blade Runner 2049. That movie's two and a half, two hours and 45 minutes. I don't care about how long it is. Yeah. If it feels right. This movie felt right for how long it is. Oh, no, man. I don't care about how long it is I can't agree with it, dude. You already gave your scores. I know. I can't I'm just saying this is how I'm about I feel. to notch off a 2.25 because, <laughs> <guy, laughs> this guy is so adamant about pacing. Like Leo Boys. and Brad Pitt, Jesus they did great. Christ, yeah. they did a great yeah. job. Amazing. You want to rate the movie on them alone? It's a fucking eleven out of ten. <laughs> yeah, but then That's like it. the retelling of a fucked up story in a not like a better light, but like a more uh, like a, they're not giving credit to the, what actually happened. Like the people that fucked these things up. It's like those people are nothing. Like this is about the people that it was that. And I get that. Whatever. I get that. So I haven't given my rating yet. Um, and we're not done talking. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. We're, we're not, but um, it may shock you guys, but I'm going to rate this movie as a 9.75. Wow. This movie... I high five Adrian just now. This movie delivered everything... And I slapped him. <laughs> <laughs> it delivered everything that I wanted from a Quentin Tarantino film. It had the things that maybe didn't make entire sense about, like, we're jumping from story to story, but, like, 
that like look at Pulp Fiction, like look at like one of the movies that like so many directors just you know develop from, and like they has multiple stories, and I think that this movie was just classic Quentin Tarantino. It was just like let's jump from this story to this story. Let's like make it a little bit like you're thinking this is gonna happen, but it doesn't. And like let's jump to like things that are just like. This shouldn't be happening, but it is. And I think that that's what Quentin Tarantino should be known for. And, and I think what he is known for, and I think he delivered on almost every aspect of that, I think that the casting was beautifully done. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, you have Leonardo DiCaprio. DiCaprio? DiCaprio. I'm sorry. We're not, we're not the fumblers for no reason, right? <laughs> um, you have Margot Robbie. You have... You know, Brad Pitt, like all of them just did such a good job in every respective role. And it was everything that I wanted from this movie. And so I think that that's why I have to give it such a high rating, 9.75. This movie blew me away. And going into it, I was like, this is a Quentin Tarantino film. I'm going to enjoy this by default. I'm biased. But it delivered every aspect yeah. that I wanted it to. Never, so, never. Absolutely, nine point seven five. I, don't believe I in will that. never I don't say it. Say, I don't believe okay. in that going into a movie and and by default be expecting to be blown away. Yeah. Oh, that's that's bad. Yeah. Why do that's, that's bad. just speaking to that, the level of this guy. Like no, he's made such good movies. Nobody's like nobody's nobody 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 is, nobody is on that level. He's There's, saying Tarantino is. That's, that's, that's what he's saying. That's not that you should, you're disagreeing. But I, that's what I he's feel saying. like you should never go into anything like that. You should never go into anything like that. This is my favorite band. I'm gonna like this music by default. Come on, that's that's that's, that's, I don't that's know. so wrong. I, I, get I, think it. That's, that's, I get it. I get it. I get it. I don't. I you go in with the higher. Yeah, yeah, you do, but, but like, be, be real. No, I don't admit it's that shit, I, it's shit. I, I'm not no, going to yeah. lie to anyone and say that I wasn't biased in making this rating, and yeah. that I do love Tarantino films, but I just think that, like, he didn't... I mean, you look at people who... Like, let's talk about, like, this is very off-topic, but, like, let's talk about, like, Justin Timberlake and his, like, oh one of his God. older <laughs> albums that was just like, like, okay, like, yeah, this is JT, but, like, you're not taking any risks... And I think that, like, Quentin Tarantino was just like, this is who I am, but I'm also going to take some weird risks about, like, just who I am as a director. And I think that he delivered that. I think that he delivered that Dude, necessarily. Okay. Have you seen any I, movies from the 60s? I can't. Or I can't, earlier. Yeah, I have. But I'm just going to say... It's very much that. I'm just going to say... Which is cool. You were talking about this. Specifically you. That's why I'm saying this. No, go ahead. You, go Adrian, ahead, go ahead. said... Do we justify our friends being dicks by saying, well, that's just who they that's are? That's just who they are, yeah. But your entire <laughs> review is based on you saying, that's just who he is. I like it, though. But it's just, I it's just like, it. okay, going into it, knowing that it's a Tarantino and film. I get that. I get that. Knowing that it's Tarantino. I get that you have a higher expectation. This is what you that. want. He's made a lot of great This is what you want before. from Tarantino, and I think he delivered it. I get it. that. I think he okay. delivered it. I think it. expectation I think is a good word. There is very heavy Tarantino style in the movie. And everything that was Tarantino style was done at 100%. Yes. But was it a good movie? Yes. I would to say me, yes. yes. I would say it was a great movie. I, I just it was like, I enjoyed it. Was expectations. I'm like, good. dude, why, why do it we as humans... I cannot help but think you're biased. Why? How would I be biased? Why? Why? <laughs> he said he wanted me to. How would I be biased? No, he I be really love advocate. all of Jim. You should have saw. No, no, I think. Okay. No, no, that at the end of the movie, me and I me and Jay, a lot me and Jay, Jay at the end of the movie, me and Jay looked at each other and we, and we both read it on each other's face that wow. I was like, this was rough to sit through. Okay. I was like, I didn't have. He, okay, I, okay. I, I didn't see. I didn't see the giddish cheer. The cheerful. Face in his face. Yeah, I, had I a saw. I saw. I on saw. I'm face. fucking worn out right now. I was, yeah, like, yeah. I was just like, all right. I was sh- like, am I am I digging too there's, hard there's to no, find the, the I think he would have had that same movie. reaction regardless of if I, if I sat. I didn't even sit next to him. I didn't. No, okay. I wasn't even. That's what. I, okay, I was trolling. I'm obviously trolling because whatever. But like, I was saying, me and Adrian both said the same thing. We watched it different days. We both had cheesers on our fucking face. Yeah. That was great. Like I liked it so much. It was everything that I wanted it to be. Nine point seven five. Okay. 
Wow. Yeah, I'm not. We are cool. I'm not backing down has. from that. That's yeah. a high rating. I'm not backing down from nine point seven. It was everything that I wanted from the movie. Wow, that's a high rating. Nine for me. If it wasn't by Tarantino, no, I mean, was... then you wouldn't have liked it as much. I don't think so. I think you're right. I don't think so. I don't then why are you writing at that? There's <laughs> that's what I'm saying. He's writing there. at that because I think that, like, when you, you have this anticipation, you have, like, this expectation for, like, what type of film is Quentin going to release next? No. Yeah, expectation, can't. I think, is the word of this conversation. No, I think expectation. Stop. Because with he's saying, but I think, like, you walk into it with an expectation. The thing is that he took it to the next but level. But, like, but like can you... Can, the thing can, is that Quentin has done for a film since, like, yeah. the early 90s, I think has been huge. Huge. It's been huge, and I okay. think that the fact that he's like been able to translate that into modern he film doesn't is so have to massive. do it like that every time. He doesn't have it to. It was still different. He doesn't even have it to follow different. the same stylistic shit to be good. Come on, you're the band that you like the most. Think about it. The 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 the, the albums that you first fell in love with. Uh-huh. You you hold them to that standard. But How could you do that? Yeah. Not really, but kind of. I mean, well, but but, no, but know, are you going to ha- hold them to the higher expectation? Why would you do That's that? That's why I thought That's that. not because art. you already know what they're capable of. But you're like, "All right, they're going to make something amazing because they've done it countless times." Well, it's so not you- countless. It's nine. That's There's good. a number. Okay, it's a lot of times, the wrong but word. that doesn't mean that every movie was good. Kill Bill 2 was not that great. I liked it. Have you seen It wasn't as great as one, but it wasn't but, but what I'm saying is like I mean oh, like yeah. look at look at the but other outstanding factors of this like you had like phenomenal actors who did you such did. good the jobs acting was amazing the and acting I think the direction was, was on par with it and that's why I give it such a high rating that's all I, I'm saying I, I, think, I don't know I'm, like I'm trying to wonder what would give so this a higher rating if for you're me. Brad Pitt or Leo, Leo right Margot Robbie did great too like, yeah, really but she didn't really much. do much. She She's didn't, saying. but like, the scenes though. that she, she was in, it was, she was phenomenal. Good. I agree. I'm not saying that the acting was bad. I don't think it was. It's crazy that he got both of them. I don't remember which one. Both of who? Leo and Brad Pitt. How is that crazy? Because they're like the biggest fucking actors of all time, almost. And they're Queen huge. Tarantino's supposedly the not biggest actor, fucking director of all time. But he's worked with both of them. our oh, generation. So but... I mean, he, both of them he, co-starring in a movie is pretty crazy. I don't know well, that. I don't know one of them. To, I don't remember which one. One of them took a pay cut. They both got ten mil for this, which is fucking stupid. Regardless of whatever we're that talking seems about, that's pretty low. But no, yeah, one of them watch, took a pay cut to be in this movie because they're such good. They want to work with Quentin Tarantino because he's a fucking. I don't great know that director. Quentin. Or, or, and I don't Quentin. think he's a bad director. I think he's a great director. But I'm not gonna say that every yeah, so movie I wanna, he shits out is good. I haven't seen a bad one so far, that's all I'm saying. I want to bring back what we disagreed on, the two nines of the group. You said if it wasn't Quentin Tarantino, you wouldn't have liked it, probably? I didn't say that. Wouldn't have liked it as you much. You said you wouldn't as have much, liked it as I'm much. Saying. Okay. I okay. said I would have. <laughs> uh, because at least you didn't backpedal, fuck. That's, I guess <laughs> he that's has just, some dignity. <laughs> that's just taste, I guess. I like super long, drawn-out cuts that matter. Like... What is that this face? Movie? None of the long out, no, drawn out no. cuts matter in this movie at okay, all. Okay, so at all. That's that's true. They didn't matter. Okay. None of this fucking matter. They didn't matter, and I loved it. I might have gave this movie a fucking eight if half the fucking driving scenes. Okay. Cool. LA Sorry, in the I didn't 60s, mean to say it That's didn't fine. Matter. Whatever. I get it. The long they shots that showed don't me matter. 15 minutes of fucking driving, not 45 minutes. I miss. I get the fucking. We're, we're in the 60s. I understand it. I'm in here. I'm in the fucking. I I get it. I get where we're at. <laughs> I understand it, right? Mm-hmm. I'm ranting. This is your lane's no, rant I'm, hour right now. Oh yeah. But. Come on, 45 minutes? I fucking get it. I'm not stupid. I I think it's a little insulting that he has to fucking do 45 minutes of fucking driving with Margot Robbie featuring Brad Pitt and the fucking hairy arm hippie girl. I don't fucking care, dude. It's insulting to me. I see it. I see the fucking neon signs. I see LA in 1969. And I hear the radio. I get it. I hear the songs. These are the songs everyone fucking knows. Everyone bops to all the goddamn time. But stop! Okay. Stop it! <laughs> I don't like it. It has no point. Okay. None of it had a point. I get scene building. I get it. I understand it. I but... misspoke. <laughs> I said on. long drawn out scenes that matter. I meant to say don't matter. 
Okay. For this one. Okay, sorry. <laughs> you got me on another. I you know. got me on another. But it was thing. great. I'm saying they didn't I'm matter. Sorry, I got and it. I go fucking loved it, dude. I yeah, loved I, it. I, I, I don't know. It was like save this... it for the after credit scene. Show me some no, more fucking no. cigarettes like, smoking. This is like it's fine. <laughs> this is like the most subtle character development. I fucking love it, dude. I love it so much. What That's why it's develop? like. Cancer from smoking so much. That's <laughs> <laughs> something fucking developed. Okay, all right, fair enough, fair enough. But I'm just uh, saying this is definitely like, like a that's your opinion, man, kind of thing. Yeah, it's like yeah, this. Yeah, I yeah, like yeah. Agree, long. Disagree. I, yeah, yeah, exactly. I like long. Because like I said, I didn't. I, 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 yeah, I you guys like. I have not seen the big fucking Lebowski. Very true. I'm gonna fucking quote that. If shit. you want to see that next, tell us in the comments. Yeah, <laughs> I want to see, all of you to see that. But that's like where we differ. Is he's Adrian saying if it wasn't Quentin Tarantino, I mean, he may not have liked it as much. But like, I just like this kind of thing. That's just my opinion. If it that's all I want. If it wasn't that I appreciate the way that he like structured, like I mean, Quentin Tarantino has been making, <laughs> he's been making films that. since. Before we were born, like right? is it? Was it? When I was mean, it? I don't know. that's probably true. Maybe Pulp Fiction Jackie was Brown released in 1994, I believe. Didn't we were born? Was in dogs then? was his first 93, movie. 92, maybe. I thought Jackie but, Brown was like 89. No, 95. But I just think that like the things that Quinn has done for a film has just oh, like entirely Thank revolutionized you. like what we view as film is, and I think that this movie. Being filmed at such, being released at such a later time in 2019, that it can still remain relevant in my eyes, and still remain true to like who Quentin was as a director in the early 90s. I think that's why I re- rated this movie so high because I think he did a good job at like being like true to him himself as a director and true to himself as like let's make a, a phenomenal film that like maybe doesn't make entire sense. Yes, I like that you said that you like it so much, even though it's like he's making a movie about stuff in the 60s, right. about some murders that were in the fucking 60s. Like, all this stuff is right. very relative to your knowledge, and you didn't yeah. know almost any of it, right? And you still like it? I didn't it. know that it was in the movie. I knew, no, of, I know, I knew of it I know. topically, like, or not topically, but like, I knew of it, like, in history, but. But, like, yeah. during the movie, you didn't know. So, right. and you still liked it? That's just, yeah, like, a absolutely. testament to, like,. He did a good job, I think. I don't. I'm not saying I didn't like it, but on the same token, going back to Tim Burton, do we pat him on the back for being himself too? It's like, good job, you did this again for the tenth time. I feel like I don't think he's very specific. I don't think Quentin is it's a hard comparison as, for me. But Quentin's pretty damn specific. But in a way, because or in a way he is, but like in a way he's not because like. All of these movies he's made take place in way different times, and they all make sense I don't in their think, style. I don't think Quinn Burton is so as, like gothic specific. Like you can't yeah. do anything with that style. Burton well, has this I mean, like he's done a lot with that style, but not anything. Tarantino Tarantino's has. Done he's sixties, seventies, eighties, nineties. Sure, but it's the same shit. Like every post time. Atri- but like eighteen hundreds type of thing. It works. Tim Burton has the same thing every time, but it doesn't work every time. And it's starting to not work yes. more. Right. But I think Tarantino, with the whole allegory of I'm falling out of the limelight and the possibility that it's his last movie, he's also maybe saying... I don't think that he doesn't make anywhere Trek, near pissed. Quentin's last movie. He said he's going to make what? Nine or ten movies? Ten movies. This is number ten if you count Kill Bill as two. I, I don't just don't see that happening. He I don't see him stopping. He's still in talks with making Star Trek, and I very much hope he does But that. see, I don't think that's him making a movie. Exactly. I think that's him doing something exactly. that's already been made. Yeah. Okay. It's his interpretation. I'm just saying I hope he does that. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure he sick. will. I'm sure he'll continue to do things. Well, God, Star Trek has gone off so many rails that it's that's a whole other podcast. But In terms of making a movie or a story or whatever... Uh-huh. I guess we'll see what happens, but this would be number ten. Wow. If he says if what, if what counts, he says is true, and if Kill Bill counts as two, with the word volume in it, I don't think it does. For me, and it's ten. If it doesn't, then it's nine, and it's one more. Yeah. Either but way, after I mean, this, how many how many last movies has Jackie Chan made? Uh, has he said that? I don't know. Right? Isn't that a thing? I don't know. Jackie Chan's last film, and it's just like the seventh time we've heard that. Cases. I mean, Last exactly, it's a, yeah. it's a thing. It's a thing. Ozzy's 
Ozzy's last tour, volume two. But if you want to go literally... back, but if you want to go back to being Quentin Tarantino, I feel like if he says something, that's what's gonna happen. Because he doesn't fucking care. He doesn't care if you go to his last. So he doesn't care if he breaks his own rules, then, right? Like sure. So we can we can throw out like ten more movies. I don't think he will. <laughs> I don't think he will. He wants not maybe not ten more, but like I don't. Well, he wants to get into more. writing books after this. That's what he says. Which will be eventually made. How the fuck do you <laughs> write a book about car scenes that fucking long? You ask, just describe the ask buildings Stephen in the King, dude. The Are you kidding me? Stephen King head. has the most. Stephen King has the most the drawn out fucking scenes. Stephen King doesn't Taco write his own Bell books. Fly by his yes. All right. Well. Any final thoughts from you guys? Man, so let's go around one more time and just you, you rated it at a six point five. So. Is that what you said? Do you want to revise that? Six point seven five. I might. I might go to six point five. No, six point seven five. Just to say it. Okay. You give it a. J- uh, so that was James. Six point seven five. J- J- James gave it a six point seven five. Jay gave it a between six and seven. Six six point five. See, okay. I think Jay is even nine. <laughs> and Taryn, Taryn is still at a nine. nine. And me, Adrian, I'm still at a nine point seven five. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. It's a nine point seven five to me. Um. But I would love to hear what everyone else thinks about this movie. I mean, it was, what, almost three hours? It was two hours and 45 minutes. It was a long movie. Um, If you're a fan of Quentin Tarantino, like I am, you may be inclined to give this a higher rating. If you're not, then I would really appreciate, even if you are a fan, I would really appreciate to hear your thoughts on the movie. What do you rate it? How do you feel about our ratings? Very polarizing here in the studio. <laughs> and where do you Very think polarizing. that we were wrong? 50% so I'm just higher. glad that I wasn't alone. I thought Jay was going to like... Well, I feel like Jay's, Jay hates Jay, shit Jay's, more now often. Jay's... <laughs> no, I think, How? I think I swayed you to give it a six. <laughs> no, not, not well, just... No, at first you were, you, were like, you were like seven, and then, and then when we redid it, you were like six or seven. <laughs> Because it's true. <laughs> but it's yeah, that's, not, why, that, no, that's why I said thing. that's why I said six point seven five. Because that's I don't think it's a bad thing. I just think you're more skeptical, which is fine. Yeah, I'm not gonna suck the dick of people we think Ex- are worthy of it. Thank ah, you. That's okay. all I was trying to say. I'm not gonna do it. Yeah. Neither uh, yeah. am I. But I'm just. This is what and I expected. You can hold to yourself <laughs> to a higher expectation, and you can strive to do all these great things that you think you're able to do. But deep down, Quentin Tarantino is just another fucking person like the rest of us. All right, well, Jay and I are going to fight later. <laughs> and I'll go um, For all of us here at Film Fumblers, I'm Taryn. I'm Adrian. I'm James. And I'm Jay. Good night. Good night. Thanks for joining us.